One. Dallas has played the Eagles more than any other franchise. And Philadelphia has not swept. They won the first game of this series. It's been since 1990 that they swept. You know, and doesn't it seem like over the years that that the toughest battles have been here in Philadelphia, that the Eagles have always really come on blitzes and really been tough against the Cowboys here? Well, this is just a tough atmosphere, a tough field to play on. The surroundings are tough. It's a tough place to play. Yeah, you remember that you know the games that Bobby Taylor had oh, here yeah. against Michael Irvin. You remember that fourth down play when Barry Switzer was the coach? And they went for it twice. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of great memories here when you think of the Philadelphia Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys. David Akers set to kick off for Philadelphia. Jason Tucker's back deep for Dallas. Akers set to get us underway. Remember how they started off in the opening kickoff? Now, now they're going to have to have a holder. Yep. Once it blows off the tee twice. This is kind of the way things usually start yep. off in Philadelphia. Yep. But remember, down in Dallas, uh, the first game they played. The onside kick. Right? They started off the opening kick with an onside kick. That's Tim Howe, who's holding for the Eagles and for David Akers. Tim Houck is usually one of the first guys down there in yep. coverage, too. He's a remarkable player. This will not be an onside kick. Akers straight away, and Tucker, two yards deep in the end zone, is going to bring it out. Jason Tucker down in the flag on the play. And you see who made the tackle? Tim Houck. That was Tim Houck, the guy that did the holding. I said he's usually the first guy down there. Isn't it funny how some of those tough guys can just find their way to the ball? Mike Carey is the referee. Number 94 right there. And there's a flag the return, against Dallas. Holding by the return team number 93. Ten yard penalty. They retain possession. First down. Holding by Pepe Zellner. Pepe, you're going to see it right down here at the bottom of the screen. There's Zellner right there. He comes in and just got his left arm around the guy. Not much doubt about it. So the Cowboys start in a deep hole to begin with at their own 11 yard line with Randall Cunningham as their quarterback. I'd say he was received with a mixture of cheers and boos. He played 11 years here. I would say that there were more cheers there than there were boos though. I think you're right. Emmett Smith is deep. Jackie Harris on the move. I think that's going to go against the Cowboys. I think. I think Eric Williams is on the move as well. Uh, he looked like he was the first guy to move, but he was clapping, so I don't know what the heck he was clapping about. Before the snap, well start. Offense number 79. Half the distance to the goal. Remains first down. Here's the Cowboy offensive line. They are big. Lozell Adams, Larry Allen, Solomon Page, Eric Williams, Mark Stepnowski in the middle, the runners and the receivers. First and 15. Back to Emmett Smith. Emmett out to about the 10. Here's the Eagle defense, as John Madden said. They'll be blitzing a lot. Douglas, Thomas, Simon, and Whiting. Hugh Douglas having a great year. The three linebackers, Barry Gardner, Trotter in the middle, who intercepted Aikman and scored a touchdown in the opening game. Taylor and Vincent, the two cornerbacks, Brian Dawkins and Damon Moore, the safety men. Good secondary. And here's Hugh Douglas here now, who has more sacks in the entire Cowboy defense. And that's Smith again. Hammers out to about the 14. I think what the Cowboys are going to do right now is just try and get off to just a good solid start. You see this, I was just talking about Hugh Douglas. Look at that, he has 12 sacks. He's leading, he and Leroy Glover from, from New Orleans Saints. But look at the Dallas Cowboy as a team, they only have 10. So Hugh Douglas, as you said, has two more than the entire Dallas defense. No blitz, three-man rush, Cunningham. Drops it up the middle. Jackie Harris makes the catch as a flag on this play. Harris had enough for a first down. A 
Hands to the face. I'm impressed with Randall Cunningham the way he's staying calm in this because this is a tough thing for him. I mean, you know, starting, coming back here to Philadelphia, and he has a little extra adrenaline getting off to a bad start with penalties and so on here, but he's staying calm. Offense number 76. Well, he After was saying the goal, that the first nine years down. he spent here were pleasant years. Well, there's Flozell Adams, the left tackle, and you see he can, he's, he's blocking Hugh Douglas there. He really doesn't have his hand to his face when he started, but he took it off his left shoulder and put it to his face. And at the end, Eric Williams soccer run. They're kind of going after yeah. you, Douglas. Like they heard about that having more socks than their entire team. So they're back at the seven. It's third and 14. The Eagles love to blitz. Here, here they, they come. come. Cunningham from the first wave of blitzers but doesn't get anywhere past the line of scrimmage. I tell you, their defensive coordinator Jim Johnson it just loves it and he's going to bring his blitzers. He'll bring them anywhere. He'll bring them on your end of the field on their end of the field and he just gets an overload on one side comes up with a free guy. Randall Cunningham sees it knows that he's not going to get rid of it but the thing that he can do he can still run a little picked up a few yards to get better position for this punt play. Micah Knorr back to punt for Dallas standing back at the back of the end zone. The Eagles will get good this field position out of this. Not his best kick by any means. Brian Mitchell says stay away from it and the Eagles start off in good shape at the Dallas 46. So we'll have a look at the Eagle offensive setup. Donovan McNabb is the quarterback. He said that Randall Cunningham, when he was growing up, was his idol. And he opened a lot of doors for a lot of young quarterbacks. There's the Eagle offensive line, Trey Thomas. John Runyon, the tackles in the secondary. Darnell Autry gets the start with Cecil Martin. And Donovan McMahon, who has 11 touchdown passes, fourth in the, in the NFC. You know, this is one thing you know about Mitchell as you watch here. Anytime he's involved after a play, there's always going to be something. Oh, yeah. Brian Mitchell was that way ever since he's been in the league. At he the is. end of the play, the whistle blows, and then he goes for about another minute and a half. Mitchell and Darren Hambrick in a shoving match. McNair. First down to Autry, who started last week but didn't get a carry. The Cowboy defense, Greg Ellis, Brandon Noble in place of Chad Hennings, who might be out for the rest of the year, Leon Lett, and Alonzo Spellman, the three linebackers, were them in the middle instead of Dat Wynn, Coakley and Hamrick, and the secondary Ryan McNeil and Felipe Sparks with Teague and Woodson the safety. Empty backfield. McNabb throws high to Amp Lee. Incomplete. The key injuries in today, today's game and this time of year, their numbers increase. Aikman, Galloway, Chad Hennings, that win. And for the Eagles, New Staley, their running who, attack. Yeah, who we remember the last time he played against the Cowboys, rushed for over 200 yards. And Remember in that game, and one of the things I always felt Deuce Staley could do, and he did it in that game, is just take it over. Say, okay, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to run the ball and stop it. McNabb dumps it out to Mitchell. A Cecil Martin, beg your pardon. Mitchell was the other running back. And Cecil Martin gets the first down at the Dallas 31. Yeah, you know, this is the thing that's really getting the Cowboys in trouble, is they used to be an aggressive defense with their safeties, and and they started down. I think it's because of the corners. They're always trying to protect the corners, but they're taking their safeties, Teagan Woodson, and playing them deep in that cover two. Now that keeps them out of any of this short stuff. So the place to attack this is short and in the middle. That's a place that Jacksonville got mm -hmm. them last week, and that's a place that the Eagles get their first down today. Jacksonville did it with the tight end. That time is running back. Here's Mitchell. 
The option pass overthrown oh. intended for Chad Lewis, and he was there. It and was Mitch, there. And Mitchell knew it, too. He saw Chad Lewis all the way. Any Anytime Brian Mitchell is in there, you know that he was a college quarterback, and the last time they played, Mitchell threw a run pass against him. Mitchell usually throws a run pass in every game, and they had great field position for it. Chad Lewis is wide open. Andy Reid calls a great play, and Brian Williams heaves it over his head. Camp Lee. In the Eagle backfield. Cowboys showing blitz, and here they come. That's Camp Lee. We spoke with Darren Woodson about the downside of what he does lead the team in tackles. You know, our, our team used to be set up for our safeties to make a lot of tackles, but now being a conservative, uh, our two safeties are very, very deep, myself and George Teague. So when you see George Teague and I making a lot of plays, then there's going to be some problems up front. But, uh, you know, hopefully the guys start catching up a little bit more as the season progresses. But right now, I'm, I'm the leading tackler, and I think Teague is like two, uh, three or four. So uh, we got our work cut out for us every week. Here's McNabb. Outside to Stanley Pritchett. And Pritchett is close to another Eagle first down, run down by Dexter Coakley. Yeah, but he's, he's short and first down. It's going to be interesting here. Well, I already know the answer because here I can see they're going to go yep. for a field goal because it would have been about fourth and two. And this is the this is the right play. I mean, sometimes you get down there and you get in this situation. You think these were moves with the ball. Let's go for it on fourth down. But here you have a good field goal kicker, and this is a play. 12 out of 13, as long as 51 yards. This will be from 40. He has a strong leg, but it's not good. Plenty far enough. But the Cowboys escape with no points against them. 9.38 left in the first quarter. Nothing, nothing. Post Sunday is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of the Super Bowl. Dallas nothing, Philadelphia nothing. 9.38 left in the first quarter. Dallas takes over after the missed field goal by Akers. The floor on the move as it comes a blitz. And there goes Emmett Smith. Hit by safety man Brian Dawkins. And that's exactly what Emmett Smith was talking about last night. He said, you know, that the Eagles also have run blitz. And he said, if you get through, he said, sometimes they're going to guess right and they're going to throw you for a loss. He said, but sometimes you can gash it. Right there, they got them all going to yep. the left. He made a cutback, and now they don't have a second layer. You see, you have three layers. You have the defensive line, the linebackers, and the secondary. When the linebackers blitz, then you only have two lines. Outstanding block by Stepnoski, and here's Smith again. See, now here's what the run blitz does. You see, you have your, your first line is your defensive line. Then your second line of defense against a run would be your linebackers, and then the third would be the secondary. Now, now when you take up these guys and you come in here and you blitz like this on a run blitz, here, now you got this whole thing covered here. Now, now once you get this blitz and you have them all up in here, you see now you only have two lines of run defense, and that's exactly what happened. He broke that first line and got all the way to the second line. That's why he got the first down. Second and six, two tight ends for Dallas. Here's Cunningham. Fires out of bounds intended for LeFleur. Randall Cunningham. Eagle great, I think certainly fits. 22,877 passing yards. Second in team history. 150 touchdown passes. He had uh, some great games and some great years here as an Eagle quarterback. I remember a lot of giant games. Yeah. He was always jumping over Carl Banks or someone. Third and six. Down he goes. Brandon Whiting. One thing about Randall Cunningham, he will hold the ball longer. He doesn't get rid of the ball quickly. And you see, he gets the pressure. He gets a pressure defense. He's going to get it from right here. 
Now right here, he's looking, looking, but he can't look anymore, and he feels that he's going to go down, so he just starts on his way down. But that was part coverage sack because he had to wait and hold the ball too long, and he let that rush get to him. Brandon Whiting had to go through three blockers. Mike Anor back to punt. Ryan Mitchell deep. Mitchell signals fair catch and dives to make it. That wind, is doing, that wind is doing yeah. some tricks with the ball. Still nothing, nothing. 7.36 left to play in the first quarter. Look at this wind, Pat. We were talking about what it did to the to the ball on Brian Mitchell. Now watch Brian Mitchell. He'll look up, then he'll look to see where the rush is, then he locates the ball again, and when he located it for the second time, was doing tricks on him. He made a fair catch, but he had to come about five yards up after he misjudged that ball. That's a heck of a play, really. Here's Donovan McNabb. Throws to Charles Johnson, complete. And I, I'll tell you, on that one, he was accurate. Yes, That's he what was. He, he said yesterday, he said that I have to work on my accuracy, and I have to work on getting the ball out in front of the receiver. Now, he ran a little, but watch, here's Charles Johnson here. He gets it out in front of him perfectly. Now, I think right there that he's more accurate when he runs a little with the ball. Instead of, you know, sitting in the pocket and waiting, waiting, he just does a little roll and throws it on the run. I think he's more accurate. Brian Mitchell, flag on the play. Mitchell was the deep back, got the carry. Before the snap, false start. Offense, number 76. Five yards, remains first down. Right now for a game break, let's return to James Brown in Los Angeles. Hey, Pat, Jeff Garcia threw his first pick in the first quarter this season, and the Saints capitalized on it, as well as converting on fourth and four, that one-yard touchdown strike from Blake to Andrew Glover. 7 nothing Saints in the first as we take it back to touchdown Pat Summerall and John Madden. That touchdown is that what he said? Yeah. Yeah. Old TD Pat Summerall. <laughs> Long ago. That's Donnell Autry. And Autry swings down the sideline before he's knocked out of bounds by Darren Woodson. Darnell Autry is, you know, we said they're going to kind of have a running back back committee. We saw Brian Mitchell's been in there. We've seen that Amp Lee's been in there. And now it's Darnell Autry. Stanley Pritchett also yep. plays when you know when they do one back uh, Pritchett does a lot of the one back but Autry is the guy that was here a couple years ago quit to become an actor and then came back to football second and two a handoff to Autry and Autry got the first down okay now, now as we look here here's Summerall and he's playing defense there he picks it off Okay, now watch him run here. Now, now he puts on the Jets. Good stride. In those days, oh, he almost dropped that ball. No, 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 no. I knew where I was. No, no. I knew you knew where you were, but you dropped the ball. Well, you could you could get up and run again if you needed to in those days. And that's why you don't worry. You didn't worry about that knee down, elbow that's down. Right. No, none of that. Uh, down by contact. None of those rules. You know who that quarterback was? Jim Finks. Jim Finks. The late Jim Finks. The late great Jim Finks. Wonderful Jim, guy. Yeah, he sure was. And look about a guy who, you know, did a lot for the Chicago Bears and Minnesota Vikings. And the Minnesota Vikings, Vikings right? yeah. A lot of their success was because of Jim Finks. But you shouldn't have intercepted him then if he was such a nice guy. What the heck were you doing? Were you in a drop? Well, he, I had to make a promise to him that I would never say he was the quarterback. <laughs> you just let that cat out of the bag. <laughs> Well, were you dropping in a zone, or was that a man no, you were doing? No, it was doing? a screen, screen pass, and I felt it coming. Well, where were you playing? Was the defensive end. <laughs> what were you doing back down 10 yards? I, I'm telling you, I felt the screen coming, so I backed out of my rush and backed into the pass. <laughs> so that was a zone blitz? Well, no, we didn't know what that was in those but, days. But that's, but that's what Actually, it was. I mean, that's what they're doing now, zone blitz. Well, look at it again. You'll see the ball hit me in the head. <laughs> Wait, right here? Yeah. The ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they said. It took me a moment to gather myself. That's what they said. What one thing about that summer wall? He uses his head. I scored a lot of points in that game. I don't know why you were dropping off if you were I'm a defensive you, end I've... and you didn't have zone blitz. Timeout. <laughs> Philadelphia timeout. <laughs> 
glad you enjoyed that. Okay, you know, I have to apologize because if we start, here's Pat here. Now you were rushing and you did feel the screen here. See, that's where I was wrong. You see, you start to rush, then you feel right at that point right there. You were right, you felt screen, then you dropped off and got the interception. I thought you were back downfield, no, so no, I'm it, sorry. It was, I'm it sorry. was a cat-like reaction. There's never been a screen played better in the history of the National Football League. You're right. Stanley Pritchett gets the carry. And now he's the fourth guy that's touched the ball as a running back here. We talked about that earlier. You know, Darnell Autry the last time. Brian Mitchell, we've seen him amply. We've seen him. And then Stanley Pritchett just got one. Boy, what happened to Leon Lett? You see him go off the field. He was, at one time, he was a dominant player, one of the best defensive tackles in all of football. And he doesn't make a lot of plays anymore. Maybe it had to do with the people around him. Torrance Small, the intended receiver, he was, when he and Charles Haley were together, they could put some heat on somebody. Watch well, this. this. This looks like Torrance Small doesn't expect that's that to right. come. He looked like he didn't expect to catch that. In fact, Andy Reid was telling us that the week before, last week against the Giants, they had nine catchable balls that they dropped. Wayne McGarity is deep for Sean Landetta's punt. It's a high one. Garrity signals fair catch and again to win plate tricks. 424 remaining at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Nothing nothing so far. Sunday is brought to you by Ford F-Series. The best selling trucks are built for tough. By Northwestern Mutual Financial Network. Are you there yet? By Direct TV. Never miss a moment. And by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. They're talking about winds up to 30 miles an hour. It was a very pleasant weekend, but today it's windy and cooled off considerably. Here's Emmett Smith again. Emmett Smith has had five games of over 100 yards here, here in Philadelphia. And Jim Johnson, the defensive coordinator, was saying yesterday that, that there's two things that he thinks are big. He said one is control first down. He said we have to win the battle of first down, and they just did. I mean, that's a win, and, and get second and long and third and long. And he said the other thing is we have to control Emmett Smith and keep him around, around 60 yards, he said, would be good. They've got their work cut out for them. They've already got that one big yeah, one against yeah. them. Here is Emmett again. And he looks like more than 60 yards. And he got another big one, and it was yeah. the same thing that we had yeah. explained earlier was against the blitz. Yep. You know, and then because if you break that front line, then you lose your middle line and you go right to the last line. Watch this. You're going to see the penetration and the blitz right here. And you see if we just stop it right here. How they all get caught up in here. They all get caught up back here, and he just runs right through it. Nobody has ever been quicker through the hole than number 22. That's Ismail, the Rocket. Boy, that could be something. Remember in the in the first game they played, they lost Joey Galloway yeah. Yeah. for the season. You see, it was a running play. Watch Rocket Ismail there. He's number 81. He's trying to get in there to block, and it looks like the pile just kind of ends up on him. On top of him, the entire pile. Yeah, He's Brandon. had a tough time staying healthy. Yep, it's Brandon Whiting there. Just just bent him over. Cowboys still checking on the Rocket. We got caught under the wash. Yeah, you can see it right there. Brandon Whiting, who's number 98, yeah. kind of gets blocked into him and just falls down on him. It was a running play. He was getting in position to try and block for Emmett Smith. You see Rocket Ismail down at the bottom of the pile. And he's still down. Looks like it has to be one of his knees. Right there. Goes out. 
He'll check his right knee. Now you can see he's explaining there what happened and how he had it down there and how he just got caught. Jason Tucker has taken his place in the Cowboy offensive setup. But as you say, I mean, you, you you think of the Cowboys passing game at the beginning of the season where it was going to be Troy Aikman who was feeling good throwing to Joey Galloway and Rocket Ismail and you have good receivers and speed. This now is a Dallas timeout now. Now it's Randall Cunningham and it's your Jason Tuckers of the world. Right now for another update, let's return to Los Angeles with James Brown. Hey, Pat, the Tampa Bay defense set up this Sean King to Dave Moore. Touchdown strike, one yard. It was Donnie Abraham who intercepted it. Abraham now has two picks in the game, six on the season, 7-0. Tampa Bay back to Pat and John. Buccaneers looked good last week against Minnesota. They might get on a roll now. I think they will get on a roll. That's mm -hmm. you know what they needed. They they lost four in a row. They just needed a win. They got that win last week, and then and you expect them to start a roll. And and just that touchdown that they just got there, you could see that it was set up by their defense. And I think if you look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, when they're really playing well, their defense does set up most of their scores. Emmett Smith has 49 yards, first and ten at the 32 for the Cowboys. Jackie Harris on the move, and here is Chris Warren, and Warren breaks for good yardage. And a flag on the play. Chris Warren. Mike Gary is a referee, and he threw holding. the flag. And that's usually holding, usually against a right tackle, but a right-handed quarterback. Well, let's see. Holding offense, number 88, 10 yards remains. Jackie first Harris. Or the tight end on that yeah, side. Yeah. Doesn't really delight Dave Campo, does it? But anytime, you know, the referee always lines up behind the quarterback. If the quarterback's a right-handed mm -hmm. quarterback, he lines up on the right side, left-handed quarterback, left side. He lines up deep, but if he calls a holding penalty, it's usually against the tackle or tight end on his side. First and 20. Chris Warren gets the same play. Right now, let's send you down to DJ Johnson. Hey, Pat and John, before the game started, when the Cowboys gathered before the last time, before taking the field, there's a common theme that echoed throughout their huddle. This is not week one. We are not the Cowboys from week one. And today, simply, we must give the Eagles what they gave to us last time. And of course, what they were given last time was one of the more thorough weapons in Cowboy history. Now, all the players I talked to realize that talk is just that, talk. And things have to be proven on the field. The Cowboys are out to do that right now. Back to you, Pat and John. Cunningham swings it outside. That was James McKnight. He was taken for a ride by Bobby Taylor. Yeah, Bobby Taylor always has a big day against these Cowboys. And the, you remember the, the, the battles, here's Bobby Taylor right here, but remember the battles over the years with Michael Irvin? Bobby Taylor is 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 from Texas and, and I think that he just he just loves to play against the Cowboys. He's not a real physical guy, but it seems like when he plays against the Cowboys, he's more physical he's than a, he is against other teams. He's a big, tall guy. Chris Warren's the deep back. Cunningham drops, and here they come after him again. And he does what he does so well. Escapes. And throws, and the pass is caught. McKnight makes a remarkable catch, and they'll move the sticks. Al Harris was a defender, and that was one of the things that Troy Vincent was telling us yesterday. He said, you have to stay true to your coverage. He said that no matter what happens, you have to stay with that guy, stay with that guy. Al Harris is doing it, but someplace he has to look back. He looks back, and the ball goes right through him. Just watch. Here's the ball coming in. Now watch. Al Harris is in good position here. And, and, and he's going for it, and it goes right through his arms into McKnight's. That's a heck of a catch by McKnight. One yard game. A heck of a throw by Randall Cunningham, and it was pretty good coverage by Al Harris. And Emmett Smith lost yardage on this attempt. 
Fifty two seconds left to play in the first quarter. Nothing nothing. The Cowboys in Eagle territory. The word on Rockin Ismail is a sprained right knee. No word about whether he'll be able to return or not. I think I've always had to rule that when they take you off in the cart you don't play the rest of that day. And they took him off in the cart. Here comes the Eagle Blitz again, and here's Cunningham. Screen pass to Harris. The tight end surges forward to about the 35-yard line, perhaps 34. See who made that play, Hollis Thomas. Yep. And, you know, and that's more and more where you're seeing these, these defensive tackles that can really run. You know, and they start, they start to run. Here's Hollis right here. And they start to run on a pass rush, and then they stop and run right down the line of scrimmage. That's the end of the first quarter with the score of the Cowboys nothing, the Eagles nothing. Fox NFL Sunday from Philadelphia will continue after these messages. It'll be third and 12 as we get set to start the second quarter. Nothing, nothing score. Cowboys Man, at the Eagle 35. Chris Warren is the deep back. The Cowboys are right in that borderline field goal range, and I would anticipate a blitz here by the Eagles to knock them out of field goal range. And here they come. The pass is complete to Warren, who slips one tackler. One tackle. He gets out of bounds, and I think he got enough for the first. And the guy that missed the tackle was Troy Vinson, who's usually a pretty good tackler. And if he if he makes that tackle, then it becomes fourth down. Troy Vinson misses the tackle, and it's first down. And he's talking about you know plays and plays and things you have to do. You watch Chris Warren catches the ball, and I watch see Vincent comes up, misses that tackle yep. right there, and Chris Warren gets the first down. Emmett Smith back in place of Warren. He gets the carry. Emmett at the line of scrimmage by Jeremiah Trotter, who's from Hooks, Texas. Yeah, and anyone from Hooks, Texas that, you know, chopped wood all his life has to be big and, and strong and tough. And, and the thing is, is, is he's another guy that always plays well against the Cowboys. And, and he's been a Cowboy fan all his life until he got to be an Eagle. But watch how. He just reads that yep. thing, and then he finds a hole. You know how the back always looks for a hole? Well, a linebacker looks for a hole to run through, or to, as I call it, to scrape. Jeremiah trying to scrape. Second and 11. Cunningham throws to McKnight. Complete, but a flag on the play. Troy Vincent wasn't going to miss that tackle, nope. was he? He's already given him one and first Mc, down. McKnight is down. This, this Eagle defense is, is tough on wide receivers. The Cowboys, we repeat again. That offense number 79. 10-yard penalty remains second down. Penalty against the Cowboys, against Eric Williams. An illegal hands to the face. But we you know, you know, talked about how they lost Joey Galloway in the first game. Yep. Rocket Ismail has already got out in this, in this game. And now McKnight is down. And he's been their leading receiver. And then they get knocked back 10 yards with a penalty on Eric Williams for hands to the face. In fact, they put that rule in for Eric Williams. Remember years ago, he used to always give that first shot boom, mm -hmm. you know, right to the face, and he was very effective with it. That's how he passed protected, and then they made that a rule that that was illegal. And that hands to the face by the tackle was kind of an Eric Williams rule. James McKnight looks like he's all right. Yeah, he does, walking under his own power. Damon Hodge has replaced him. Let's watch it. You'll see. Here he is right here. Here's Eric Williams. We'll see that hands to the face penalty. See right there. He's up. Oh, there it is right there. He had that right hand right up in his face mask. And there's that hit and that tackle by Troy Vincent. He was going to wrap yes. him up and get him down, and there was going to be no question about it. McGarity replaced Hodge before the play got started. Here's Emmett again. And Emmett inside the 20 to the 15. Near another Cowboy first down, not quite enough. You know, we've been watching Emmett Smith run run for so many years, yep. and, you know, and, he, and he's such a great and natural runner. But the one thing that he always does, he always holds the ball in his left hand. 
And he said that he's always done that. And then you see right at the end, he'll put that right hand around it. But you see, he takes it, puts it under his left arm, always runs with the ball in his left hand because he has the best balance that way. Jackie Harris. And this is going to be close. Those are the things that we talked about before the game is the, that uh, Randall Cunningham will do differently. We see that 60 was a magic number to hold Emmett Smith to, and he already has that in the second quarter. But you know, you know that Randall Cunningham, the difference between the offensive game plan for Randall Cunningham and Troy Aikman would be more of that type of mm -hmm. stuff right there that we just saw where he ran a rollout. And you know, because when Troy Aikman plays, it's mostly drop back, stay in the pocket. And when Randall Cunningham plays, they want to move the pocket a little. Just about that short. And Dave Campo said, let's go. Yep, you saw him say, go for it. See, here's the thing that's different. See, here's Randall Cunningham rolling out and throwing. Jackie Harris just doesn't get turned around enough to get that first down. They need about a foot. And they're going to go. We remember them going for it on fourth down here and not making it, too, don't we? First, I remember them going for it on third down and not making it, and then coming back with the same play on fourth down. And then there was a penalty. Up. Emmett Smith is deep. Jackie Harris on the move, and Cunningham is going to get the first down. We asked him last night, Randall, when we were talking to him about what he thought he could do physically seven years ago. Well, John Shures. Yep. You know, the, the thing that he said is he said, I could still quarterback sneak and I could still leap. And he did both of those on that play. That's, that's one big advantage you know, to having Randall Cunningham is, is a quarterback is right at the line of scrimmage when he gets a ball. And if he can run with it, he's the best short route runner there is because the back is back seven yards. So he has to run seven yards before he gets to the line of scrimmage. Cunningham faked and rolled, and it's picked up in the end zone by Brian Dawkins. Cunningham tried to throw that away, and he didn't get it out of the back line. Didn't throw it far enough. Dawkins sprints back to the Eagles bench. He's bringing this thing to life. Like he has ideas about He's driving it by Men of Honor, starring Robert De Niro and Cuba Gooding Jr. Friday only in theaters. By Miller Lite, grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. And by Gateway, in Gateway Country, people rule. Watch this. Mike Mamula really makes this play. It's a bootleg. You see, they fake to the left. And he comes out to the right. But watch Mamula right there. He's in Cunningham's face. And Cunningham is trying to throw the ball away. But Mamula was there, so Cunningham couldn't step up. He kind of twisted, and that took the distance off the ball and let Brian Dawkins intercept him. This is Darnell Autry with the ball as the Eagles started from their own 20 after the interception by Dawkins. And here's another flag. And there seems to be a lot of pushing yeah. and shoving and talking and stuff like that oh, after each play. And that's the kind of game this always is. That was one of the first things you said that these two teams really don't like each other. This is against Dallas. But I always said, you know, if you're going to do that stuff, you have to stop when the whistle blows. I mean, be be tough, be aggressive from time the ball snapped till the whistle After blows. After the ball was dead, personal foul on the defense, number 91. 15 yards, automatic, first down. Demetrius Underwood. You watch him right here. Watch Demetrius Underwood. There, you see the play's over. He just tried to poke someone in the eye there. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. First and ten, Eagles. No gain. Darnell Autry gets the carry again, and Greg Ellis. And another flag. I tell you, Brian Wortham, the middle linebacker of the Cowboys, really played that well. That's the thing that he does. He plays a run he plays well. A run extremely well. 
And when he sees something, he goes after it, but that's going to be another penalty on the Cowboys. Yep. Illegal hands to the face. Defense number 91. Five yards. Automatic. That's two First on Demetrius Underwood. And Demetrius Underwood will probably be taken out of this game because, you know, they don't need that kind of stuff. People saying, what the heck is going on? Today's combined plays 33, combined penalties nine. Another first and ten for the Eagles. And McNabb takes the run, throws, and the pass is picked off by Woodson. Darren Woodson. And another flag after the interception by Woodson. Seems that he always has. This is a face mask violation against the Eagles. It seems that Woodson also always has big games here. Yeah. He has big games every week. Well, that's what he said yesterday. You know, no one likes a turf here in Philadelphia, but he said he enjoys playing here because of the crowd. Personal foul, major face mask, defense number 24. 15 yards, retain possession, first down. Darnell Autry. And there's Darnell Autry right there, and it's the 15-yard variety, not the five-yard variety. Major variety. You know, Darren Woodson was saying how he doesn't like to play deep, but here he is playing deep now, and you'll see what happens. Because he's deep, he comes up with this interception. You see the cross, and he just, he just is able to sit back behind everything. He read that crossing pattern, got a jump on it, and picked it off. Emmett Smith is stopped for no game by Hollis Thomas. Maybe one, lost a yard. One thing that the, the Eagles have, they have two good defensive tackles, you know, especially when you're trying to run the ball. One is, is Hollis Thomas, who just made the play there. And the other guy is Corey Simon, lined up right next to him, right there, number 90, who was their number one draft choice this year. And you watch that guy, and just the way he plays, I mean, he has a real motor, and and I think that he's going to be a top defensive tackle for a long time in this league. He's going to be in line for rookie of the year. Here's Emmett. And a flag before the play. Before the snap. It's going to be a start on the offense. Number 79. Five yards. Second down. Eric Williams. This week, it's the Big 12 showdown on Fox Sports Nets College Football Saturday. Heisman Trophy candidate Eric Crouch leads Nebraska against conference rivals Kansas State with a trip to the Big 12 championship game at national title hopes on the line. Plus other action beginning with the college football pregame show at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 Pacific, Saturday on the Fox Sports Net. Second at 16. Cunningham drops. Screen pass to Emmett Smith with blockers in front. Close to a Cowboy first down. Well, that was a good-looking play. They, they, they came on pressure. Mark Stepnoski, who's a heck of a center, he gets out there. Watch old Step. He's going to act like he's blocking, then he'll come right down here. See, 53 start down here. Now he's going to end up in front of Emmett Smith. See, they form the screen, and here he is right here. Emmett Smith just gets right behind him. Boom, he just knocks his guy right off the screen. He's at the game. Yeah, he was in our booth. Yeah, wearing sweats. Chris Warren. Ooh, I don't know about that. I don't know either. Third and very short. Well, he had to get across that yellow line. See, it's where they're going to mark that thing. That'll bring up, if they don't make it fourth and short. You remember what happened? Another interesting. You remember what happened the last fourth and short was a, a quarterback sneak and yep. I would expect if if it's not a first down although that last picture looked like it's going to be a first down it might but if be. it's not a first down I would expect a Randall Cunningham with with quarterback sneak again. Well this is about Oop. that's how much he needs to quarterback sneak. than the last one. You know, Andy Reid's record as an Eagle coach is 10 and 15 yet. Many coaches would be criticized and questioned, and Andy Reid is very popular here. 
Yeah, because you know he has he has a way to go with this team and this organization, and they know that he's the right guy for it. And you just have to give him time. Well, there are all kind of rumors about him being in line to coach it. He, he said no. College at BYU, but he says no. I think you got to blitz these holes right there. Oh, they did. That's the thing is you have to you have to blitz those two zero holes, those two holes on either side of the center, and really. Really pinch the center. Here's what it looks like from the umpire. See, here's here's where you need to pressure right here because you know he's going to get the ball. And you see here because Randall Cunningham has that thing where he just he just gets the ball and then makes himself skinny. You see, he goes sideways. See how he goes sideways there? That's just enough to get through. And he got the first down. I mean, he's not only you know you know, can jump and can move a little, but he has a good feel. A wonderful athlete. <laughs> Emmett Smith and Emmett gets down near the Eagle 20. And if the Eagles were hoping to hold him to 60, they've lost that battle. Yeah, so much for Jim Johnson's uh, 60 yards. That's not going to happen. We're talking about Emmett Smith and, and how he he runs and he's he's really gashed him a few times yeah. on those on those run blitzes. When he gets through there, I mean, he just. You know, as he was telling us last night, he said you have to have patience to the hole and then a burst when you get to the hole. Here's Chris Warren. Dragged down by Brian Dawkins. But he falls forward for a couple. Well, the Cowboys are really, really playing conservative football now, and that's what they want to do. I mean, use their offensive line, run, control the ball, play solid defense. The only thing that's hurt him really has been those eight penalties they've had so far. They want to control the clock. And then they don't want to, you know, they want to eliminate turnovers. Yep. And they had that one where Mamula got to Randall Cunningham when he was trying to throw the ball away. Warren again. The search for Agent Mulder is on. Finally, the most anticipated premiere of the season. That's right, The X Files is back. Tonight at 9, 8 Central, right here on Fox. The truth is out there. That's one of the things I've always said. The, the truth, truth is out there. Out there. You know who's the truth? Emmett Smith is the truth. Yes, he is. And there he is. Cut down by Trotter. Now he was saying there's only two things that he does left-handed is is play pool and run a football. And there's nothing else. I mean, he doesn't do anything else. Plays golf everything, right everything else he said he does right-handed except play pool. My dad told me years ago, never play pool with a guy that plays pool left-handed. Or oh. never play poker with a guy named Doc. Or play golf with a guy who can hit a one iron. Oh, that's it. Yeah. If he has a one iron in his bag, get your hat. Third and six. Cunningham drops. Throws to Robert Thomas. Who has good hands and he's close to a first down. And they have it. Dave Campo was was saying that he thinks that, that Robert Thomas is is going to you know grow each year and he, because he's a good receiver. He's a good blocker. Remember, he was a guy that they moved from linebacker, yep. switched him from linebacker to fullback, and he said each year he's going to get a better feel being a fullback. But as far as a blocker, he's not going to be anything like Moose Johnston. Moose Johnston was one of the best lead blockers that I've ever seen. Well, he always knew where to go. That's the thing. He had a feel to how to get to the guy he had a block. Here's Emmett Smith again. Emmett. Down to about the seven. Although Robert Thomas just made a heck of a block yes, on, that, he did. on that play there. He went out and he got his guy and he drove his guy and he ended up putting his guy in his back. Watch Robert Thomas up here. He's going to be right here, 44. Point. And then drive, 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 drive. And then the right guy. Right, put him down right yes. there. That's here's what you do. You hit. You drive, you drive, you drive, and you knock him right out of the picture. There's Troy Benson. Second and goal. Cunningham to Emmett Smith again, and Emmett's in the end zone. He 
is the truth. Emmett's been at it a while, but he doesn't seem to have lost anything. Hey, here he is, and he, and, he, and, he, and he loves to cut back. You know, you have to go to a direction. He started that ball towards the left side and then cut it back to the short right side. Nobody's ever done it better. Extra point is good by Tim Cedar and the Cowboys lead 7 nothing. 442 left in the second quarter. Well, it's Larry Allen here. Larry Allen there and Mark Stepnoski. And you see Larry Allen gets that hole. Stepnoski gets the hole. And that's what allows the cutback. If you get behind Larry Allen, watch Larry Allen right here, the job that he does. I mean, he takes Hollis Thomas and he darn near knocks him out. And then he's not even done yet. He's still hitting him. Knocked him out of the picture. Mike Anor to kick off. He knocked him over the umpire. That was the umpire, Cam. I think he knocked him head over heels over the umpire. Brian Mitchell takes it five yards deep in the end zone and decides not to bring it out. So the Eagles will start at their own 20, but Dallas leads it 7 0. Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. The Cowboys have controlled the ball eight minutes, 18 minutes, 29 seconds. They've run 31 plays to the Eagles 14. And you know what that's all about? That's all about the Cowboys having their running back and the Eagles not having theirs. McNabb gives to Autry. Autry fights for yardage. And gets about nine. You see George T. George T came up and squared up and he just forgot to put his arms around him. He thought he had him. He's just going to run right into him. Watch T here, number 31. He just gets him there, forgets to put his arms around him, gets knocked back. Yeah. Autry really brought some load on that play. And then who makes the tackle? Darren Woodson Darren makes Woodson. most of the tackle. Second and one. And this is Cecil Martin, and I don't know if he got it or not. Don't think so. Brandon Noble playing in place of Chad Hennings. They got Brandon Nobles playing in there. Michael Myers is playing in there. Yeah. Demetrius Underwood. And of course, Leon Lett. Alonzo Spellman's playing defensive end. Which Leon, he prefers. There's Leon Lett there. Now we have to just watch him for a play and see what he's doing. He's right here. On the quarterback sneak and they're indicating first down. Yeah, this is what Leon Lett did right here in the quarterback sneak. He's always had a problem with this, staying low. You see what happened is his shoulder pads got above the blocker's shoulder pads, and on a quarterback sneak, you're always going to lose that battle. He made something out of it. He made it actually made a pretty good play spinning out of it. Yeah, but he lost the battle as you it, said. It was too late. Yeah. Autry again. Alonzo Spellman. Ryan McNeil. See that helmet with a star on it. Old Randall Cunningham said that you know he said I never even thought about the fact that I was a Cowboys and I went play with the Eagles in Minnesota and gave with the Cowboys and Never thought about the rivalry and and wearing a helmet with a star on it until I, I put my uniform on and looked in the mirror. <laughs> I'm a Second cowboy. Pritchett is the deep back this time. And he gets the carry. The Two minutes booming. And that's the fans booing the choice of plays by Philadelphia. Coming up later today, catch the best professional figure skaters in the world as they compete in round two of the Grand Slam Super Teams of Skating. Brian Boitano, Katarina Bitt, Brian Orser, Nicole Bobic. Headline a star-studded field of Olympic and world champions. 
Grand Slam Super Teams of Skating. Later today on Fox, check your local listings. I don't even know how they keep their ankles from turning in. I'm not sure they do. McNabb chased. Fumble. And the ball went straight backwards, picked up by John Walburn. I don't know what the heck that was, whether whether he hit and fumbled that thing or he just tried to tried to throw that back there or something. That was a strange looking play. Some, somebody put a hat on it. You see he has it there, yeah. yeah. But then he lifts it up. Yeah. He looks like he lifted up and tried to lateral or to throw it. And George Teague hit him. But yeah, but it doesn't come out then. See, it's no. still not but out. There it then goes. Maybe, maybe that was that last hit when it was knocked out. There's the recovery. This is a timeout. John Dallas. Wellborn, the, the old left guard. Here it is from the umpire's cam. I think he is trying to throw it backwards. I don't know. So he's trying to stretch for the first down. You can see the marker there where he has to go. That's what it was. He was trying to stretch for the first down. And then he got hit and the ball just went right out. And that's that's a dangerous thing to try and stretch with one arm. You can, you, know, you have to keep both arms on that ball and it's hard to, to stretch it out with both arms. That's Wayne McGarity who scored two touchdowns this year. He was having trouble with the wind in yeah. the pregame warm-up. Stay away from it. I don't think the ball hit anybody. The Eagles down it at the 20. Don't forget next week it's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader beginning with J.B. Terry Howie and Chris on America's favorite pregame show. Then the Cardinals take on the NFC Central leading Vikings plus two NFC powerhouses collide as the Rams battle the Giants. That's where we'll be. Or other regional action. It all starts at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific next Sunday. Check your local listing. You know, the Eagles are going to have a lot to talk about, I think, at halftime. I don't I don't think they're playing with a lot of emotion. They don't look like that. I, I thought they'd come out here all fired up, but they haven't. They, 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 they've only completed one pass to a wide receiver. They haven't thrown a ball and over completed a pass in over 20 minutes. And Again, especially offensively, they're not playing with a lot of emotion. That was Chris Warren. On the other hand, the Cowboys appear to be playing with some emotion. Well, they do, and and the only thing that really stopped them was themselves with the penalties. And then you remember that one that Randall Cunningham was trying to throw away, and, yeah. and that you know you know became an interception. But but they're playing playing a lot better than they have. Here we're going to watch Larry Allen down here. One of the better guards. Warren gets the carry, and the Eagles take time out. Caldwell on the stop. Excuse because me. Because they have good field position here, they want to get the ball back with that field position. Seven nothing. Dallas leading a minute 15 left in the first half. Third down and about 14. And if the Eagles stop them from getting the first down here, they'll take. Another timeout, their last timeout. Pitch is back to Chris Warren. Warren got very close to first down yard. It stopped by Carlos Emmons. Yeah, I think I think that he got the first down. He did. And that was the thing that now they now they can't do it. So now the now it's going to change where the Cowboys are going to try and get a score now. Cowboys go hurry up. These are the types of things that you know not playing uh, uh, really hurt a quarterback. I mean, uh, you know, from preseason on to the beginning of regular season. Other than we has heard, Troy Aikman gets most of the reps and you know and does all these two-minute uh, offense-type things, and then you get a backup quarterback, and they always have trouble in these situations. Don't forget, coming up on the Visa halftime report, JB, Terry, Howie, and Chris will have scores and highlights from around the league, and our Fox Sports ticker will have up to the second stats. That's all coming up on the Visa halftime report. Cunningham gets in at Smith, who slipped down. Chris Warren left limping just a moment ago after his last carry. 46 seconds left. 
Each team has one timeout remaining. That was the Eagles' last timeout. Dallas has one left. 46 seconds left. Cowboys have the ball third down. Need about seven. This is Emmett Smith. Emmett up to the 40. Not enough for a first. And the Eagles will get the ball back one more time. They'll get the ball back if the if the Cowboys have to punt it. Here comes the punting team. Micah Knorr going back deep. Play clock is 16, so there's going to be about a second yep. or maybe two seconds left. The Eagles have no timeout. Can't do anything about it. If they could get a change of possession, there would be a timeout at change of possession. This will not get to change of possession. One second left. Let it run as long as they could. Mike Lenore back. Please put one second on the game clock. Well, now it's one two second seconds. The They're going to add please. a second. Now, I would think, in fact, the Cowboys are going to bring in their offense. There would be no reason to kick this ball. Mm -hmm. And all they all they have to do is, is come in and kneel down. Take they anything. kicked it. The only things that could, that could happen would be bad. That's right. And I was I was thinking that Nor would just get the ball and mm -hmm. just and just run around and fall down. But if you're going to have someone handle the ball, you'd rather have your offense. So they're taking their punt team off the field, bring their offense back just to just to run out this last second of play. And this will just be a kneel down by Cunningham. That's all he does. And that'll finish the first half with Dallas leading Philadelphia 7 to nothing. And Gary Jones departs. Looked like he's playing with a lot of confidence. I mean, he threw that interception, uh, you know, into a zone where, where Darren Woodson was just sitting back there and he just threw it right to him. Emmett Smith over on the sideline that Fedora, the familiar hat of Tom Landry on all the jerseys of the Cowboys. And look where Emmett Smith ran in the first half uh, six times for 34 yards to the left, eight times for 53 yards and a touchdown in the middle. They only tried the right side two times for minus three. So you can see that most of Emmett Smith's yardage were to the left side and the middle. And of course, that's where Larry Allen is. Larry Allen, still one of the best linemen in all of football. You know, you were talking to Emmett. We were talking to Emmett last night about why he carried the ball under his right arm. And he said he'd been doing it under his left arm, I'm sorry. Been doing it still since he was in high school. And said, nobody ever corrected him. No, he said the first time he ever carried football, he carried it left handed and never changed from it. Brian Mitchell will bring it out of the end zone about two yards deep. The Cowboys special teams down in a hurry and Mitchell gets to the 15 and that's it. And let's go down to D.J. Johnson. Pat and John at halftime I got to spend time in the Eagles locker room and John like you said earlier the offense stressed being more aggressive. They said there's plenty of zones to be found when uh, when the Cowboys are playing cover two. They said the receivers must do a good job getting in those holes and the quarterback has to find them when they do get in the holes. The defense stress just waking up. They say this whole team the whole game has been sleepy the whole time. Everyone's been very dull. They need to wake up at the end. Uh, Andy Reid came in. He simply said, hey, there's no way they can beat us. Only way we can lose is we beat ourselves. They don't want to beat themselves in this game. They should come out fired up in this first quarter. That was Darnell Autry, and he was running like he was fired up. Got about a nine-yard gain. Well, that's what, you know, we talked earlier how the Cowboys had to do that with their big offensive line and their running backs, and, and the Eagles would like to do that. I mean, they have, you know, two big tackles that they pay a lot of money to, yep. Trey Thomas and John Runyon. And if you're paying them a lot of money and they're worth something, you got to use them. Second and one. Hand off to Autry again. To the 30, and that should be enough for the first. They did get behind John Runyon there. Look at the difference in the in the game, Pat. In the in the first week, at halftime. 
They, the total yards were 181 for the Eagles, and today it's 85. They rushed for over 100 yards. Today they rushed for 40. They had 14 first downs in the first half, and 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 they just dominated. I mean, the Eagles yeah. just came out. Remember, they started with an onside kick and just dominated the Cowboys from that point on. But not today. Audrey, the Cowboy pursuit gets him led by Baron Wortham, the middle linebacker. Wortham's pretty good, isn't he? Yes. Against the run. I mean, he has trouble. You know, when they play that cover two, those two safeties have the deep middle, and then the guy that I mean, they have the deep outside, and the guy that really has a deep middle is the middle linebacker. And Wortham is so aggressive, and he wants to play the run so hard that if you fake a run at him, he'll step up in there, and then you can get in that middle of that cover two. That's what happened to him last week against Jacksonville. Second and eight. McNabb gives to Darnell Autry again, and he tries to take it outside when it's caught by the Cowboy pursuit. And the fans, his fans are starting to boo now because you know they you know, you you run, you don't get much on first down, then they expect him to come back and throw something and get a completion on second down. Third and long, and here comes Leon Lett. They take out the middle linebacker, Wortham. Go with their nickel package, third and eight. I mean that's that's an advantage for for the Cowboys when they get worth them on off the field on a passing down. Stanley Pritchett's the Eagle defensive back, the deep back. I'm sorry, not defensive. McNabb with time throws the short pass out to Pritchett, who will not get enough for an Eagle first down. See that's the thing when you talk about defense if you can if you can play good defense on first down and put them in second and long and then eventually in third and long then you can let them do stuff like that and just come up and tackle them. Wayne McGarrity back deep. McGarrity has been having trouble with this win. The, you know we, we watched him in, in the pregame warm up he was having trouble with it. Landetta's punt sails to McGarrity. McGarity is around the corner. He's got one man to beat for the moment. And out of bounds as the Eagles chase him in that direction and a flag on the play. I saw a hold by the Cowboys. In fact, it was just as McGarity started out to his left, I saw a, a white jerseyed fellow grab a dark jerseyed fellow. Well, I don't want to get it done, but just, I'm just watching with raw <laughs> eyes and I see him start to break. I see a guy grab another guy. They smashed. They didn't see it though. They didn't see what I saw rise. They they saw something else. During the return, minor face mask on the on the kicking team number 43, five yards. First down. A minor face mask. That's five yards. Number 43. Yep, there it is, right there. Damon Moore. That looked like face mask against face mask. Yes, and that wasn't what I saw. I did see a hole though. Fox NFL Sunday brought to you by the United States Marine Corps. The change is forever. First and 10 Dallas. Randall Cunningham the quarterback and Emmett Smith gets the carry and gets a couple of yards. Barry Gardner made the stop. You know one of the things that D.J. Johnson was saying that I have the same feeling that that it's kind of a sleepy uh, Philadelphia Eagle team. I felt that in the in the first half. I, I, th I thought they'd come out more fired up, like I said, and, and, they, and they and they have it. They look like they're just kind of kind of sleepwalking here and going through the motions. Well, the whole stadium is like that. Yeah, I know. And, and the Eagles aren't good enough to do that. There are some teams that can get away with that. The Eagles aren't one of them. Cunningham out to Thomas. Couple more and out of bounds. Cowboys leading 7 0. Pat Summerall with John Madden at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. I think the Cowboys have to, you know, you know, not let them, if, if you do have that old sleepy dog, you just let them lie around. You don't kick them. And, and you have to get points up on the board. I think you don't want to let them sit in there too long. They have one score. And they had one interception in the end zone, but they got to get another score or two. Here comes the blitz, and Cunningham comes out of the pocket. If only he can. And has for years, and he gets a first down and more. 
Randall Cunningham. You know, and when out he, of bounds by Trotter. Excuse me, John. Uh, I was just going to say, when he comes out of the pocket, you don't know what he's going to do. I mean, you know, there's a lot of quarterbacks that will feel something here. You see, he sees this lane right here. And anytime you give him a lane like that, he's going to take it. But you see, a lot of guys are just run out of bounds here. I mean, Randall Cunningham starts like a sideline. You think he's going to go out of bounds, but then he cuts back in yep. and picks up six or seven more yards. That was a 19-yard run. I mean, those are the kind that Randall Cunningham makes because he makes decisions like that. First and 10 at the Philadelphia 40, and this is Emmett Smith. Getting wide, steps out of a couple of tacklers, and gets out of bounds in front of the Eagle bench. And now the fans are starting to boo because of the poor tackling of the Eagles. Let's watch Larry Allen here. I mean, you know, we know if there's a guy in front of him, how well he blocks, but watch him when he pulled. I mean, I mean, he has good speed, and Doinke gets one, just knocks him out of the way. Doinke gets the other one, and when he hits him, you know, I mean, how they big and strong a punt. Yeah, but they go back about five yards. I now, I mean, Larry Allen's a big guy that brings a load. Here's a little guy, Tim Howard, that also brings, brings a load. load. Yeah, he sure does. That's Chris Warren. And Cunningham pulls it down and fakes a couple. Of throws and takes it himself for about three yards. Brandon Whiting made the stop. And you could just see that Randall Cunningham is getting more and more comfortable in there. You know, when he can do things like that, when he can go back, fake to one guy, fake to another guy, still run the ball. Well, you know, going back to what he said last night, I asked him what he could do seven years ago that he can't do now and he said he thought a minute and he said nothing I can do everything I could do ten years ago or seven years ago in fact he said if anything his arm is stronger yeah. now than it was when he was younger and he's always had a strong arm this pass is out to McGarity and McGarity gathers himself and gets about a yard shy of a first yeah and the, you know the the fans here don't like their offense because they're not very aggressive. They're not running the ball. And now they don't like their defense because their defense isn't tackling. But if you, you add up missed tackles yep. today, the Eagles have missed a whole heck of a lot of tackles. Cowboys are going to fourth and a half a half a yard. They're yeah, going to the, go for it. This is a tough situation here. If they kick the field goal, it would be a, a 53 yard field goal. And you're not going to do that with this win. No. Nope. If you punt it and it goes into the end zone, you're you're going to pick up about 10 yards, so you may as well go for it. The Cowboys are going for it, fourth and about a half yard. This is a little bit longer than they had before when they went for it. They're two for two, and both of those were quarterback sneaks. I don't expect that this will be a quarterback sneak. Randall Cunningham gives to no kept it himself and Randall has the ball knocked loose and knocked out of bounds. The Eagles came up with the play they needed. Brandon Whiting hit Cunningham. Yeah they got that bootleg down. I I I didn't expect him to run a quarterback sneak but I didn't expect him to go for the whole bundle either. Randall Cunningham you see can't get to the outside that's the same thing he tried on Mike Mamula when he threw his interception yep. this time it was Brandon Whiting who has good contain out here see with Randall White, uh, Cunningham you can't let him get to the outside I'll tell you Brandon Whiting hit him just as he's throwing that ball and his arm wasn't coming forward see Randall tries to make it look like his arm was coming forward incomplete pass that ball was out before his arm went forward yeah, it was fourth down so the Eagles have it and McNabb goes right downfield and it's incomplete intended for Ryan McNeil on the coverage it's intended for Torrance Small you know, the, the thing was here's here's Torrance Small and Ryan McNeil going down that side that ball was just thrown a little short yeah. and he got a little more out in front he would have had a shot at it because he had a step or two on McNeil it was interesting the Eagles said that they wanted to work on the other cornerback Felipe Sparks and looking at Randall Cunningham right knee that's Darnell Autry the ball carrier and there's no game for that Brandon Noble led the defense and the Cowboys only have one other 
quarterback, and Clint you see him warning up Clint Sterner, who's the rookie free agent from the University of Arkansas. He played a lot in preseason. In fact, Dave Campo said last night he played a lot more in preseason, and he would have liked. He knows the system. That's the plus he's got going. Third down and long. And a flag on the play they might have taken too long. Cunningham's right knee. Ball starts offense. Number this against the Eagles. Five yard penalty, third down. Bubba Miller, the center, how does he get a false start? By moving the ball. Yep. You know, anytime the, the center, they just give him one move. I mean, he can take the ball and just bring it directly up there. If he takes it and moves it at all and doesn't bring it directly up there, then, then that penalty is against him. Third and 13. <laughs> McNabb. Incomplete. Intended for small again. This wind, not making excuses for anybody, but the wind is tough. It's blowing about 30 miles an hour. You know, and this is the area that, that Jacksonville really hurt the Cowboys in last week in that middle. Yep. I mean, Torrance Small got there in the middle. He only got one hand up. I wonder if he would have, you know, reached for two if he had a chance, but he was in that hole. He was where he was supposed to go. Landetta back to punt it. McGarity lets it go. And it bounces down and rolls dead at about the nine yard line. And a flag on the play. George Teague better watch out that the ball didn't hit him. It was close. They move it out closer to the 10. This another penalty against Dallas. And they'll move it back closer to the goal line because if that ball was was rolling around and if it touched the any part of the any part of the body of the Brandon of the return Kitt. team it's live by the receiving team number 31 after the distance to the goal they retain possession first down that's George Teague right there yep. and that's why he was close you see he's holding and grabbing right there and then right there he's pretty close to the ball too he could have had a double dip there Cunningham is back at quarterback for the Cowboys. Chris Warren's the deep back, and he gets the carry. And Warren gets out past the 10. That double dip dose of Chris Warren and Emmett Smith has been very effective. Yeah, and, and the thing that they're able to do with that is sometimes they'll use them both at the same time in the same backfield. And, and then the other thing is they can bring Chris Warren in in the passing situations and, and, and keep Emmett Smith out of having to run those pass patterns and basically let Chris Warren do that type of thing plus run and let Emmett Smith just kind of stay with the running. Second and five. Warren again. And he cuts back and gets outside the 15. Right now for a game break, let's return to James Brown in Los Angeles. Hey, Pat, despite a horrible first half, Atlanta still in it. Danny Cannell in for the injured Chris Chandler with the concussion. 19-yard strike to Terrence Mathis. We got a ball game, only a touchdown difference, 14-7. Bucks on top in the third. Pat Summerall, John Madden. Back at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, 7-0 Dallas leading. Dallas with the ball at their own 15, first down. Cunningham. This time it's Emmett Smith, and he flashes into the secondary. Emmett Smith to the 40. Out of bounds. Just ran right out of bounds. Yep. He looked like he was just looking at the inside, and then he just ran right out of bounds. But that again was the middle. You're going to see him start to his right, and then look, we can stop it right here. We can see that he sees this lane right yep. here, and that's that's where he hits. Now, now, now he hits that backside. Makes a move right there on how makes Bobby Taylor miss again poor tackling by the Eagles and Emmett Smith is up the sideline and it just runs out of bounds. He, yeah he didn't even look at that white line. He was looking back inside at the tacklers he either he either ran out of bounds or ran out of gas one of the two. Well if he ran out of gas we better refuel soon because he he gets the carry again stopped by Grasmanis. You know this is the worst 
eagle tackling team that yeah. I can remember. I mean, you know, part of it, I mean, Emmett Smith, as I said before, has had big games against the, the Eagles. He's had over, he's had five 100 games here, one, five 100 yard games here. And, you know, part of it is him, but again, the Eagles tackling is just sloppy today. Second and eight, and Warren replaces Emmett Smith. Here comes the blitz. And Warren flashes into the Eagles secondary. The blitzer missed. And that's and that's exactly what happened. Remember we explained this before that that if you look here you have three levels. You have the line and then two is linebacker and three is a secondary. Now here's what's happening. When you take these guys and you go and you and you blitz and you take here and you come and you blitz these guys and you take all the gaps then then you look at it and you put them all up in there and now you have the first line and the second is the secondary and that's what happened there's no middle line there first to 10 Chris Warren gets the ball again and loses yardage this time Whiting made the stop and here's a previous play and you're going to see the blitz and they hit the blitz they hit the gaps I mean Trotter's just blocked right uh, blocked right there they hit the quarterback they missed the running back and you see who has to make the tackle it gets into the secondary boom right now I mean if you get through a blitzing line and linebackers the first guy you're going to run into is just like that Brian Dawkins is going to be safety. the safety man second and 11 Cunningham drops to throw it and drops it out to Chris Warren and Warren struggles down the sideline not much there seven nothing Cowboys lead you know, we talked about what it would be before the game. And you know, you look, Emmett Smith has rushed 20 times for 121 yards. Chris Warren has rushed nine times for 48 yards. Emmett Smith is averaging six yards per carry. Chris Warren is averaging 5.3. So that's what it is. I mean, that's what it's That'll about. The today. job done. The Cowboys. It's about their running backs and their offensive line doing a good job. That's what it is. Third and nine. Cunningham throws downfield incomplete, and there's a flag on the play. This is going to be against the Eagles. Carlos Emmons, the, the linebacker of the Eagles, hit Randall Cunningham just as he threw that ball. It's against Philadelphia. Troy Vincent. There were fouls by both teams on the play. Both Pass teams. Both teams. On the defense, number 23, and illegal hands to the face. Offense, number 77. Those fouls offset. Solomon Page. Here's a Troy Vincent one. You're going to see him on McKnight there. I guess that's the illegal. Oh, right there. You see he yep. grabbed his face mask with his left hand. And then, and then here's the Solomon Page run, one hands to the face. Yep, right there, you see the right hand up there in the face mask. And then the other thing is Carlos Emmons, the linebacker, hit Randall Cunningham just as he threw that ball. There's a lot of stuff went on yeah, in that play. Yeah. But they go right back and do it over again. Third and nine. Tucker comes in motion. Cunningham. Fires downfield to McGarity. McGarity is at the 30 and stopped there by Vincent. That'll be fourth down. I'll tell you the thing that that did by Randall Cunningham. He felt the blitz from his left, so he ran a little to his right through the ball to McGarity, but that put the Cowboys in field, in goal, field position. goal range. Just that play there, that little scramble by Randall Cunningham when he felt the blitz and getting the ball out there to McGarity. Didn't get him a first down, but it did get him in position so they can do this from 48 yards out this is Tim Cedar far enough and the Cowboys lead it 10 nothing with 158 left in the third Brought to you by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of the Super Bowl. By Compaq, welcome to the new IT, inspiration technology from Compaq. 
by Zocor. Talk to your doctor about Zocor today. And by Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. We ought to get out and enjoy some of the history of this place. Valley Forge right there, huh? Our next you know, visit. Excuse you know me. what I did one time? I went to the Delaware. You know where Washington crossed the Delaware? Yeah. Remember as a kid you read Washington crossed the Delaware? And I thought the Delaware was like the ocean, the Pacific Ocean. You know, like you went from San Francisco to Hawaii or something. And it's just a little thing. It's just like from here to there. It was nothing. Did you cross in the Delaware? Try to throw a silver dollar across? Yeah. And I, you did? No, I don't know if I did or not. I mean, I threw maybe a rock across. Yeah. But it wasn't. I mean, didn't you think as a kid, you know, Washington crosses oh, yeah. the Delaware. Didn't you think that was a big old thing? Yes, I did. The Delaware's nothing. I mean, the length of it is maybe like 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 yards. The width. 50 yards. The across, width. Yeah. yeah, the width. Across. Where he crossed. Yeah. And I, 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 that was probably, you know, things you learn as a kid in history and then disappointed later in life when you see it. Mm -hmm. That was probably the biggest disappointment I ever had in my adult life. I thought you did it when you were a kid. No, 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 no. When a kid, I read about it. Oh, oh. I read about Washington crossing the Delaware. I thought they had like big ships, like they were crossing the Pacific Ocean or something. It was nothing. He was standing up in front of the boat. That's the picture I remember when he was crossing the Delaware. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I remember too. But when you think, the, how far did you think the Delaware was when you were a kid down here in no Lake City? I had no idea. I thought it was a big, big, well, wide I body. Did. Okay, then have you gone and looked at it? No, I haven't. Okay, the next time you're here. Go look at the Delaware where Washington crossed. And you'll say, whoop, is that all? Doors kick off. Sails into the end zone. He's done a whale of a job all year long. And so the Eagles will take over at the 20. But the Cowboys lead 10 to nothing. The best of Sunday is back. Act with a night of season premieres starting with Futurama, The King of the Hill, and The Simpsons, then Malcolm in the Middle, and the long awaited premiere of The X Files. That's Fox season premiere Sunday, kicking off tonight at 7 6 Central, right here on Fox. Did they have those things that you stick your feet in and the benches when you were playing? No. Cecil Martin makes the catch and the carry afterward. You know, one of the problems the Eagles have had is they've only completed one pass to a wide receiver, and they haven't completed a pass to a tight end. And you remember last week, it was it was a tight end that killed the Cowboys. Yeah. They haven't, and they only threw one to the tight end, and I remember, and that was that run pass that Brian Mitchell attempted early to Chad Lewis. But that's tough. If you don't get the ball to your wide receivers or tight end, you just throw to your running back. That is not a passing game. Darnell Autry gets the carry. Stopped by Brandon Noble. And for another game break, let's return to James Brown in Los Angeles. Hey, Pat. Gary Collins looking good today. 13 of 22, 129 yards, two touches, including that one to Amani Tuma, who breaks a couple of tackles. It is 17-3. Giants, 248 left in the third at Summerall. John Madden. Second and eight back here at Veterans Stadium. It's 10-0 Dallas. McNabb throw incomplete. Intended for small, broken up by McNeil. Still only one completion to a wide receiver, and Small hasn't caught a pass yet. As Torrance Small, he's trying to get in here and run a slant. He gets in, but Ryan McNeil has perfect coverage on him. I mean, he just, I mean, you have to get your body inside, and then you have to separate a little. You know, they said they were going to work more on the other uh, side yeah. of Flippy Sparks, and I don't know that. But nope. they've thrown one. I mean, here's Flippy Sparks down here. I can't remember one. I don't remember them throwing one on him at all. Third and eight. Here comes a Dallas blitz. McNabb throws it up for grabs. Almost picked off by McNeil. McNeil better wait to watch out. He took his helmet off. Yes, he did. You see what Darren Woodson did? That's why Darren Woodson is such a smart player. He went over there and picked up here's McNeil, a flag. and he just took him off the field. That's 
one thing. Yeah. Ryan, Ryan McNeil's been in the league for eight years. He knows better than that. Unsportsmanlike conduct. That's what it is. Defense number 47, removing his helmet after the play was over. Yeah. 15 yards, automatic. First down. And he didn't have to do it. No, of course no not. penalty or anything. And right. you just wonder why why guys do things in the heat of battle. I mean, that was great defense. He had good position. There was no penalty called. Well, I guess he wanted one called on Pinkston. But you can't take off your helmet. No. George Teague knows it. Darren Woodson knows it. Darren Woodson comes over and grabs him. Right there, you see Darren Woodson grab him, and he pushes him off the field because you can't be on the field with your helmet off. I mean, that just comes uh, under the area of things you can't do that are not very bright when uh, you do them. An emotional mistake. I guess that's as good a word as any. And he, but he and knows he, better than that. Yeah, like and, that. But, and, he, and he made two great plays yeah. in a row. It wasn't yeah. like anything bad. I mean, good things were happening. He wanted a, he Pinkston wanted a kicked him in the back of the head on the way down, but not intentionally. No excuse. No excuse. First and ten as a result of that. And McNabb goes back to throw it. Steps up into the pocket and fires up the middle. Pass by Small caught. And the fans know it. They say, finally, we yeah. get the football to a wide receiver. So now he has two completions to a wide receiver. And that was Torrance Small's first one. You're going to see him. He's going to come down here, and he's going to turn to the end. You see, and the thing that he does well is he flattens it out a little and works back towards the quarterback. Away from Sparks. Yeah, that was Felipe Sparks there. McNabb to Bridget. Bridget only gets about a yard. Now, this is the thing. I mean, it's easy to say the quarterback and Donovan McNabb, a young quarterback, but to be honest, they, they really don't have a good running back and they really don't have a good receiver. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score of the Cowboys 10, the Eagles nothing. Fox NFL Sunday from Philadelphia will continue after a word from your local Fox station. He wants him to tighten things up. Yeah, finish it off. You know, this is always a big game here for Eric Williams because he's from this yeah. area. He went to the high school here and the local Philadelphia guy grew up here and when he comes back here, he has a lot of people here and and not only wants to play a big game, but wants to win that game. Yep. He's telling someone to well, they'll take it. It's Eric been a frustrating Williams. year. You know, Eric, Eric Williams is one of the more aggressive offensive linemen in football. There's not a lot of real aggressive offensive linemen, but Eric Williams over the years has been one of them. Screen pass to Pritchett. He's got some room and some blockers and gets down to the Dallas 20 yard line. Bubba Miller, one of those out in front of him. That's the thing is, the, is the Cowboys fall for this one. You see the rush, and the rush just keeps coming. They don't drop the rush off. So then they, they, they let McNabb get a good shot to Pritchett, and then Pritchett can get into that secondary. Usually, most teams will, will drop a lineman off like you did back in the day when they see or feel that screen. Darnell Autry gets the carry. Gets about a yard. I wonder what made Darnell Autry come back to, to football. Remember, he, he played, he was on the team and decided he was going to quit and go be a, an actor in Hollywood. And, then decided he wasn't going to be an actor. He wanted to be a football player. Well, someone told him as an actor he was a pretty good football player. Well, you know what happened? He tried to get a part as a football yeah. player, and they told him, you don't look like a football player enough. Here's Donovan McNabb with all kinds of time and overthrows the intended receiver, Darnell Autry. You don't look like a football player is what they told him. That's what they Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then he said, if I can't get a part as a football player, I'm not going to get any part, so I'll go back and play for the Eagles. Because he started with the Bears and then came here. You know, I had a player once that played for me. Yeah. And he told me that he wanted to, to be an actor. He was going to acting school. And I was saying, you know, that's stupid. You can't make any money. You know, you can't do that. Anyway, to make a long story short, the guy was Carl Weathers. Not bad. 
pass complete to Pritchett is well short of the first down. And here comes the Eagle field goal team. Akers trotting out. But this is okay for the Eagles because yep. they need something. You know, we've always said that the toughest points to get are those first ones. And the Eagles have been shut out. You got it. You have to break that thing, break through, get some points here. You know, you're down by 10 anyway. At least this is going to get you started. And with 13 minutes, you have plenty of time. Weathers didn't come back to the Raiders, did he? No, no. Heck, he was big in those Rocky moves. Yeah. The field goal by Akers is good. It's 10-3. Andy Reid's team finally gets on the scoreboard with 13 minutes left. Saturn now with two distinctively different car lines, the L Series and S Series. By MSN, everything you need to feel at home on the web all in one place. By Visa, the preferred car to the NFL. Visa, it's everywhere NFL fans want to be. And by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. The leaves are starting to fall. Foliage is changing. It's that time of year. It's 10-3 Dallas. And the kickoff goes out of bounds. Ooh, that's that's always a mistake. big one. Yep. Yep. That puts the ball on the 40-yard line, and that's ball a kick, lot of field, of field position. Ball replaced at the 40-yard line. First down. That might be the most severe penalty there is. The search for Agent Mulder is on. Finally, the most anticipated premiere of the season. That's right, The X Files is back tonight at 9, 8 Central, right here on Fox. The truth is out there. Do you agree with that? Yep, you always like that. Always like, you always like to know that. But I said earlier in that first half, uh, Emmett Smith was the truth. Well, we've seen him over the years. Yeah. And He's a real warrior. One of the toughest guys I've ever seen play this game. Fumble on the exchange by Cunningham and wisely. He just drops on it. Those are things that you know happen when you play a backup quarterback. But when the backup quarterback's been playing for 15 years and the center's been playing for 12, that shouldn't happen. I mean, the snap was up there. Stepnowski yep. did his part. Looked like Cunningham did his part too. He had his hands on it and just dropped it. Second and 11. Emmett Smith is the deep back. Back to Emmett. Cunningham pumps, pulls it down, throws it away. Yeah, that's what Cunningham could always do is take that arm and bring it all the way out and just stop the ball at the end of his delivery and then bring it back and do it again. You're like most guys will fake and they leave the ball up around their shoulder. He can bring it all the way out and then bring it back again. There's Ernie Zampezi on the left. Les Miles. Jack Riley. Yeah, here's Jack Riley. He's the offensive coordinator now. Ernie Zampezi is a consultant. Third and 11. So Jack Riley's going to call here. Eagles showing blitz. They don't. Oh, yes, they do. Cunningham from behind, chased and hit. And the Cowboys will have to punt. Oh, did Carlos Emmons unload on Randall Cunningham? From behind. When he started to come out, he really unloaded on him. Watch number 51 here. He starts on the inside. Now watch Cunningham comes to the outside. Cunningham right there. Oh. And that was an unload. The, the Eagles are using some spy today where a player just mirrors Cunningham. When they do that, that guy is Carlos Emmons who just made that hit. Mike Lenore back to punt. Brian Mitchell deep for Philadelphia. Makes the catch. Gets back to his feet in a hurry. And Mitchell struggles for yardage as a flag comes flying in. Holding against the Eagles. It seems like every return there's Everyone. been one. There's, there's been a penalty on the return team. Some they've seen, some they haven't seen. During the return, holding on the return team number 57. Ten yards. They retained possession. First down. That's James Darling. 
Randall Cunningham really did take a shot on that third down. Look at this. Right there. 10-3 Dallas. 12 minutes left at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Cowboys leading 10-3. Out quickly from McNabb to Charles Johnson. You know, we talked about a spy and what a spy is. Now, here's Randall Cunningham. Here's Carlos Emmons. Now, what a spy does is he just mirrors the quarterback. Now, Emmons is just going to mirror him. You see, Cunningham starts back. Emmons just watch it. Now, see, he starts going this way. He just mirrors and mirrors and mirrors him. And then, of course, he flaps him at the end of the mirror, mirror, mirror. Second and nine. And off to Audrey. Audrey taking it down and out of bounds. And let's go for a game break to James Brown in Los Angeles. Pat and John the Collins to Toomer combination working well. Again, take a look at Collins. Beautifully thrown pass. Soft right in the hands of Amari Toomer. 32 yards, second touch of the day for Toomer. Three ties a career high for Collins. Let's take it back to Pat and John. A lot of giant doubters. Doubt their record should be what it is, but they keep winning. Yeah, and they needed Amani Toomer to step up. That was one of the things that he's doing it now. McNabb uh -oh. off to the races. Chased by Teague and Sparks. Felipe Sparks was limping over in pursuit of McNabb. See, the thing that you can't do is you can't give McNabb this lane. You see, if you stop it right there, you see the lane that he had, and you give him that big a lane, he's going to take it. And he can run it all the way to where he runs out of bounds, but he has a first down. That's the thing they always say. You have to stay in your lane. You have to stay in your lane against these kinds of quarterbacks that can run. This is Autry again that gets the carry. See, McNabb runs for 17 yards and Autry runs for like one or two yards and that's always a tough thing when you're when your quarterback is also your best running back. That was true remember for years with the 49ers when they had Steve Young. He was not only their best quarterback and best passer but he was their best runner and that's the same thing the Eagles have here with McNabb. It's a big load to carry second and eight. Ten minutes left now. McNabb drops. Screen pass coming. And again, it's going to work. It's Pritchett. Pritchett gets to the 45 yard line of Dallas. That's enough for an Eagle first down. It's been the biggest part of their passing game, generally, to the running back, specifically the, the screen passes. You're going to see Pritchett here. What you do is you just step up in there, try and hide, let those rushers go by, and then slide out. Now that time Spellman did come off. Did you see Spellman yep, went yes. to the outside, but then Pritchett just cut it inside the Spellman. Here's McNabb with a lot of time, and finally somebody break loose, breaks loose and hurries him up, and Teague comes down with the interception. Flag on the play, and way back. And there's a flag right there about the 33-yard line. And I bet it's against the Dallas Cowboys. I bet you it's defensive holding because it's in that area. And while McNabb was scrambling, there was a flag that came out right down there. You're exactly right. It had to be defensive holding, and that was that was long before he threw the ball. That was when he was scrambling. Talking about how when you play a, a scrambling quarterback that you have to stay with your coverage. Holding in the defense, number 47. 47. Five yards. McNeil. Ryan McNeil, you'll see him down here. See, he's looking in, and now he gets a bump there, and then he just holds on. Yeah, yeah, that's just that's just lazy there. I mean, he didn't he didn't have to do that. I mean, the the, re the receiver wasn't doing anything. He put that hand in there and then just left it there. Ryan McNeil has made a couple of uh, you know bonehead mistakes. Costly. Today. Yeah. Costly. Yeah, and, and and stupid things. I mean, things that shouldn't be done. George Teague just limped out, sat down, hurts. Here's the reverse to Charles Johnson, and there's nothing doing there. Greg Ellis, the first to arrive on the scene. That's what they always tell the defensive end on that side. When the ball goes away, the first thing you look for is reverse. See, they're checking George Teague's right foot, taking his right shoe off. But if you're an end, 
if you're an end and the play goes this way, you get upfield and look for something coming back that way. Now watch Allen. The ball starts away, then he looks back and he sees it coming back this way, and he gets up the field and makes a tackle. Good That's play perfect. by Greg Ellis. Yep. McNabb drops in the pocket. Now they pressure him, and now he takes off with a lot of room. McNabb inside the 25 to about the 23 yard line of Dallas. Up the middle. Yep, and Trey Thomas did a great job because Greg Ellis had him start, and you can't take an inside pass rush against these guys. I'm going to show you what happened. Here's Greg Ellis here. He gets here. Now watch right here. He's going to take an inside right there. You see, then he gets collapsed to the inside. And then when he does that, that opens up that middle and gives Donovan McNabb a great big old lane. As we talk about where pass rushers have to stay in their lane, Greg Ellis did well against the reverse and not against that. The pass is outside to Darnell Autry. And Autry down the sideline, touchdown Eagles. Autry got it into the end zone. Cowboys don't blitz a lot. They came on a blitz on that one. And Donovan McNabb threw it to the same side. You see the blitz coming down here? Yep. And he threw it to his hot receiver. That was Darnell Autry. Missed tackle right there. And Autry takes it into the end zone. To tie it up is Akers. Detmer is the holder. That's Coy Detmer. And the extra point line drive does get through. And that was close. It just barely got through. Here's the touchdown to Autry. Tied at 10 with 7.38 left. There's George Teague limping off. You can see what happened. Watch his, watch his right foot here. See right there, it gets caught once. And watch, it get caught again. That was his injury. Jason Tucker for the Cowboys at the one. Looking for room, find some. Tucker. Almost to midfield. The Eagles stripped the ball loose, but he was down. Amp Lee made the stop. And so Dallas will take over. Score tied at 10. Coming up next, catch the best professional figure skaters in the world. As they compete in round two of the Grand Slam Super Teams of Skating, Brian Bortano, Katarina Vitt, Brian Orser, Nicole Bobic, headline a star studded field as the Cowboys go back to work. Passes out to Thomas, who slips away from a couple of tacklers and picks up about five. Now the Eagles are coming to life, and you know, part of that life was given to him by Ryan McNeil. And you look at this penalty, 15 yard penalty, and that gave him a score. And then this one here on the scramble where he just left that hand up there when he didn't have to and it would have been an interception. He had a couple of blunders that really led to Eagle scores but I'll tell you Donovan McNabb was pretty good. He ran twice for 40 yards on that last drive and he was three for three passing so that was a big part of it too. Running hand to Smith and no place for him to go this time. You feel that something has changed yep. here. You know we talked about how the Eagles were kind of sleepwalking and they they looked a little loggy but they've they've come to life now. I mean they've come to life both offensively and defensively and I think this crowd is starting to come to life. The Cowboys had a chance earlier to really put them away and and they didn't get it done and now these guys are up and they're up and back at them. There's the Eagle owner Jeffrey Lurie third and five. Cunningham in the shotgun this time. Side intended for Wayne McGarity incomplete and Dallas will have to punt. Jeremiah Trotter read that thing perfectly. They were trying to come across in motion, get the ball out there. Trotter was right there. In fact, that, that he, he was pretty close to being in a position to intercept it. And if he didn't intercept it, he was going to be in a great position to make a tackle. Micah Nord to punt. Brian Mitchell, number 30, back deep for Philadelphia. 
Always dangerous, Brian Mitchell. A tricky win. Mitchell lets it bounce, takes a cowboy bounce, and is downed on about the two yard line by Kareem Larimore. Next week, it's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader, beginning with J.B. Terry Howie and Chris on America's favorite pregame show. Then the Cardinals take on the NFC Central leading Vikings plus two NFC powerhouses collide as the Rams battle with the Giants or other regional action. All starts at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific next Sunday. Check your local listing. The Eagles backed up at our own three yard line. Isel Reese is in there now for George Teague. We saw George Teague injure that right foot and uh, go into the locker room. That was on the interception after the penalty. So now they're playing with Ryan McNeil at this corner, Felipe Sparks at the other corner, who they really haven't done much to. Right. They still have the best player on the defense, Darren Woodson at safety, along with Isel Reese. Felipe Sparks was limping earlier, but seems to have taken it off. Cal, is one of those Cal guys you report 20 times. McNabb on first down, throws outside to Cecil Martin. Right now for another game break, let's return to James Brown, James Brown in Los Angeles. Pat and John Keyshawn hooking up with Sean King. King looking for him. Two touchdown receptions on a day, three catches for 47 yards. And as I mentioned, two of those TDs, 24 7 bucks, 530 left in the fourth. Back to Pat and John. 530 left in the fourth at Veterans Stadium, second and six. McNabb to Autry. Not much doing. I think some people jumped on Keyshawn Johnson a little too soon. Maybe. Uh, Maybe. He's, a, he's a player. There's no doubt about that. What Andy Reid's trying to do now is just get the ball out and, and get a first down. You know, that's the first thing. I mean, your first goal when you're backed up is to get it out to the five yard line. And that gives you a punter 15 yards if you have to punt. And then the next thing is just get a first down and then get beyond the 20. This is a big down, third and five. Stanley Pritchett behind McNabb, who throws incomplete. McNeil on Todd Pinkston makes the play. They haven't been able to get that slant on McNeil. McNeil plays that very well. I mean, they're trying to get it right here. You see, they get him turned a little. But McNeil is so quick, and he can get his hands in there. I mean, he plays he plays that slant as well as anyone. I would think that they would either try another pattern on him or try the slant on someone else, because they've already proven it doesn't work this way. McGarity back to take care of this punt makes the catch cleanly. McGarity out of bounds at the Eagle 45. There goes George Teague. Well, he's down on this side of the field now. He's on the Eagles sideline. The best of Sunday is back, packed with a night of season premieres, starting with Futurama, The King of the Hill, and then The Simpsons. Then Malcolm in the Middle, and the long-awaited premiere of The X-Files. That's Fox season premiere Sunday, kicking off tonight at 7, 6 Central, right here on Fox. First and 10, Dallas. That's LaFleur back in motion. Back to Emmett Smith. Emmett ducks in the middle. Not much. McKnight. Here is Randall Cunningham at the beginning of the day being introduced. And here's the reception that he got. And now we'll see how the end of the day turns out for Randall. What did you think the beginning of the day was like? Do you think it was mixed? I thought it was mixed. Yeah, I did. Very mixed. I thought it was more plus, though, than minus. I mean, I thought there was more applause and boo. It should be. Here he is back to throw again. Has time incomplete. Knocked down Bobby Taylor on the defense. James McKnight, the intended target. I think neither neither one of these teams have have great receivers now. I mean, I mean the Cowboys have all theirs hurt, and the Eagles never really did have any. So 
They're not completing a lot of passes to the receivers. But I tell you, this this Eagle team and these Eagle fans still understand defense. I mean, they know third down, and they're all standing up in the stadium right now. Third and nine. Cunningham up under center. Drops to throw, steps up. Sacked from behind by Hugh Douglas. Around the corner is Douglas. And down goes Randall. And those aren't Bulls, those are Hugh. You know, Hugh Douglas was talking about that a couple weeks ago and saying that it's not the number of sacks you have, it's when you make the sack. And if you make them in a fourth quarter on third down with a score tied, that is a big sack. And they ought to have something special in stats for those things. You know, it's not what you do or how many times you do it, but it's when you do it. You'll make that a was lot. A big one. You'll make a lot of sacks when you have Jackie Harris blocking you. If you're Hugh Douglas. Mitchell signals fair catch. Today's game being produced by Bob Stinner and directed by Sandy Grossman. The associate director is Mike Roig. But I like that Hugh Douglas. I mean, right. that, that, that he's had, you know, that that sack right there was a real big sack. In fact, the Eagle sack today, they've had two on third down and they've had one on fourth down and. Again, you know, when you get these things, they're sometimes as big as anything else. First and ten at their own eight for the Eagles. Here's McNabb dumping it to Cecil Martin, the fullback. Up quickly is Darren Hambrick. Well, he was up quickly. Yep. Look at him. He said he used his head and he wants to hear him boo him. At the ten, broadcast associates. Or Charles McDonald and Wayne Wilson. The technical producer today is Bob Muller. And we'll continue in a moment with the credits. McNabb. Autry. A couple. Now we come to the big third down offense. We're talking about their third down defense when they're all standing up. They're not standing up for the third down offense. It's a Dallas timeout. They have one left. The Eagles have two. Look at these fans on third down yeah. offense. They don't. They, they don't really believe, do they? On, on defense, they did. I mean, they knew that you know that they had to have a play. Hugh Douglas gave them that play, and you don't get the feeling now that they expect that they're going to get that offensive play like they expected they were going to get the defensive one. Now the thing that McNabb has to know here is is you you want to try and get a first down but you have to have a safe play. Remember against the Redskins it was the same situation. Yeah. Yep. The score was tied and it was right at the end of the game. McNabb threw an interception to Daryl Green. The Redskins took the ball. They got it down there. They kicked the field goal and won the game. So the, the you know I mean you want to get a first down it's third down but the thing that you can't afford here you cannot afford a turnover. The Eagles are three of 11 on third down. McNabb 14 out of 33. Most of his damage has been done running. McNabb holds and throws and complete. And the ball's not loose. I think that's an incomplete pass. And because if it were a complete pass, it would be the Eagles ball there because they did recover it. But again, you have to catch the ball, have control of the ball, come down with it with both feet. Izell Reese hammered Torrance catch Small. The ball, one foot down, the other foot never gets down. So he didn't have both feet down before Izell Reese got there. And Izell knocked it loose. Wayne McGarity goes back again. That really did his part, though. Line drive kick, good kick, chases McGarity, who makes a heck of a catch. And that takes off with it. McGarity and the Cowboys get it back to the 43 yard line. That's where they'll start. The search for Agent Mulder is on. Finally, the most anticipated premiere of the season. That's right, the X Files is back. Tonight at 9, 8 Central, right here on Fox. 
the truth is out there and it might be out on the field in Veterans Stadium here in just a few moments. Well, the Cowboys only have one timeout, although they get a timeout at the two minute warning. But with a score tied, time isn't important right now. I mean, I mean, both teams have plenty of time. We haven't gotten down to where we have to worry about the time right. and those kinds of things. You can call any of your offense in this situation. First and ten at their own 42, and Cunningham drops. Firing downfield, flag on the play, and there's no question about it. Troy Benson. Climbed up the back of the intended receiver. Yeah, but he also intercepted the ball. Well, this is going to be a big turn of events here because Troy Troy Vincent had good coverage and intercepted the ball. James McKnight. And they are going to call pass interference on a whoop. You, you talk about the biggest penalty. This is the yeah. biggest penalty. This puts them right dead in field goal range. They don't have to do much else. Well, they'll probably want to take some time yeah, off. Yeah, the they clock. will. They certainly will. Pass interference. Defense number 23. Automatic. First down. Just watch him here. The ball's in the air. You see, he gets his arms right over over McKnight before the ball gets here. That was pass interference. Yes, it was. See, the ball's in the air now. You see, and he just brings his arms right down over McKnight's while the ball's in the air. Didn't make a heck of a catch, did he? Yeah. Cowboys first down. Back to Emmett Smith. Emmett stiff arms and down to the about the five before he's knocked out of bounds. Barry Gardner took Emmett out of bounds. Let's just see if Emmett Smith is just going to take off here again. You get Thomas, you get behind that lead. Thomas really made a good block there. And then Emmett Smith just tries to get inside and make a little cutback there. And Emmett Smith gets up limping yeah. after this play, though. See, he didn't run out of bounds that time. No. Nope. Got his leg caught under the tacklers. I believe it was Bobby Taylor. 23 carries, 130 yards for Emmett. Now you can see right there where his leg gets caught up right there. You see his left leg. Just as he's going out of bounds there. Second and two at the Philadelphia four. Warren has replaced Smith. Chris Warren gets the carry. We'll get the two minute warning. Cedar loosening up and getting ready. During every two minute warning, all the officials get together and compare notes about the number of timeouts each team has remaining. Yeah, that's that's a big thing. In the in the old days, there was only only two guys that could call timeout, and they used to go over who would call timeout also. Now anyone could call timeout as we see the Eagles just doing it. Emmett Smith for a loss. Those of you who watch the Giants overpower Cleveland 24 to 3. Welcome to Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia where the score is 10 10. Dallas Philadelphia Pat Summerall with John Madden and the Cowboys in field goal range certainly have the ball at the Eagle nine yard line and Tim Cedar their kicker is already in the game. He has made one of one today from 48 yards out. That was his career long. That was a big play for the Eagle defense because the the Cowboys in that situation on, on third down could have gotten a first down before they got a touchdown and would have controlled some more time on the clock and the Eagles smartly after they stopped him took a timeout. So the Eagles are going to get the ball back and still have one timeout. Right. With Mike Anor holding Tim Cedar. From 27 yards. Good hold, good kick. Cowboys recapture the lead. 13 to 10 with 151 left. Yeah, 
yeah, and, and they're dangerous. And that's what the, the Eagles now need is a combination of a of a good return here and then and then some great play from Donovan McNabb. And he's, and he's played well this second half. Micah Noor to kick off the Cowboys special teams among the best. Mitchell will have a chance at the six. Still on his feet. Now he's taken down by Isel Reese and Darren Woodson. As good as he is in the regular defense, Darren Woodson is second on the team in special team tackles. Yeah, and, and it always amazes you that he's even on special right. teams. I mean, that shows what kind of football player he is. I mean, he's a nine year veteran. And he's the he's the best defensive back they have, the best defensive player they have, and they play him on the special teams. But he probably plays in more plays than any player in the league. He probably does, and plays it well. But he's every down on defense, and then he's on special teams. McNabb back to throw. Pass is incomplete. A little high for Brian Mitchell. Now, McNabb was telling us yesterday that he that he has to work on two things. One is accuracy, and then within the accuracy, of getting the ball out in front of his receivers. And, uh, that throw is neither. Uh, and he needs he needs some accuracy right now in these next couple of throws. And for the Cowboys, they have to stay in their lanes. I mean, some of the biggest plays that they've given up have been where they've gotten out of their pass rush lanes and letting McNabb run. McNabb again firing to the outside high way over the head of everybody for Nay Brown but my fault he said third and ten well you know that could have been he was throwing that away too. could be and uh, you know, I mean he was just looking over there and Nay Brown was over there and it was good coverage up against the sidelines and if he tried to force that in that one could have been intercepted but he only has two more chances here third down third and ten of a catch by Small by Johnson and a flag on the play and that was good coverage too yeah. Charlie Charlie Williams the third corner was right there pass interference defense number 25 has declined play results in a first down this is a heck of a catch yeah, what they're saying is that Charlie Williams was grabbing Torrance Small before the ball got there. But it was pretty good. It was a, you know, we said that Donovan McNabb needed an accurate throw. First he sure ten. got one. And he got a very good catch. This one's not so good. Brian Mitchell just dropped it. Uh, you don't see that much. I mean, no, Brian don't. Mitchell is one of those guys that, that they put in to catch balls. I mean, he's the guy that catches the punts. He's the guy that on third down you put in as a receiver. And you aren't going to see many balls go through his hands and hit him in the face. That's the role he played with the Redskins all those years. I mean, that's just right there. It just goes right through his hands and hits him in the face. I mean, that's that doesn't happen. Just took his eyes off. Second and ten. McNabb back to throw it again. Steps up into the pocket. Gets away from everybody. He'll have another first down. McNabb. All the way to the across the 35 to the 36. And they're going to take their time out now. You know the thing Final about one. McNabb is he not only can run and he's big and strong, but he's fast. Yes, he is. McNabb is the fastest quarterback in all of football. I mean, he was timed in like a 4-5-40. And that's what defensive backs and running backs run. And, and watch, here's where he gets out of it. That's where his strength is. And here's where his speed is right here. I mean, he, he, just outright, yeah, he just outruns guys. Got away from Greg Ellis back at the line of scrimmage. Yep. I mean, he has he has that tight jersey, you see, and there's nothing to grab onto there. And then and then he's so strong that just if you just try and grab, he's going to run right out of it anyway. And then he's so fast that he just runs right away from you. So he has a whole bunch of things going, and those were the things that I said that they had to watch out for. They had to watch out for McNabb running, and he got him on a run. 58 yards and five carries. He's about 225. I mean, he has all those yeah. all those combinations. He's big, he's strong, he's fast, and he's going to be a quarterback in this league for a long time. 
And now if they had to kick a field goal right here it would be about 53 yards. Didn't, so, didn't someone tell us that uh, Akers hit one from 64 in warm up 64 yards in the pregame warm up. Yes. But I don't think they feel comfortable about it right here. I wouldn't. First and ten. Here's McNabb looking again. And again he takes off and throws it away as he is taken down hard by Pepe Zellner. All right. He got horse collars. Here's one of his long pregame kicks right there. It was that same way going in that same direction. Hit the top of the upright. Yep, but you don't want to at the distance. You, yeah. don't, you don't want to hear thump no, and then doink. The dreaded thump. Yep. On any on any kick you just want to hear one thump and you don't want to hear another bit of noise. It's second and ten. There at the 36 yard line. McNabb drops. Dumps it out to Mitchell. Mitchell gets closer. Very close to an eagle first down. But not enough. No timeouts left. Now they're going no huddle. They got to. Third and one. Here's McNabb back again. Dumps it over to Mitchell. One handed catch. Mitchell made that catch. He made up for it right there. Now they can spike the ball. Here he can go up and spike the ball because he has a first down. He couldn't have before because it was third down, but he could then to, to stop the clock. Mitchell Mitchell dropped one yeah. earlier, but he made, he made up for it, and he, he got McNabb off the hook and making a great and catch right a, there. Acres, acres closer. Look this catch. That's that catch there. I mean, he just goes up and catches that thing with one hand. One handed. So, so the one that was perfect pass to him goes right between his hands, hits him in the face. This one that is high, he jumps up and catches with one hand. Didn't need both hands. They can run one more play and then spike it again. Here's Big Nav back to throw it. Lops it outside. Intended again for Mitchell over his head. I don't know if I was going to run one more play that that would be the play. I would think you have a two way go here if you go for the end zone. I mean, I, I believe the place you throw the ball is in the corner of the end zone, that second pylon. And you just have someone go there and you throw the ball right to the second pylon, and it's either caught and it's a touchdown or it's out of bounds, and then you kick your field goal. You got time. But I don't think you should throw something short. If you're going to throw something short like that, like that swing, you may as well just run the ball. Third and ten. McNabb drops again. Looking in deep and out of the end zone. Charles Johnson, the intended target. Those of you who watch Tampa Bay win its second in a row, defeating Atlanta 27-14. Welcome to Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia where it's 13 10 Dallas but the Eagles in field goal range and their field goal team on the scene. I like what Andy Reid did there or Donovan McNabb. I mean go for the touchdown if you don't get it then come back and do this. You have a two way go from 35 yards out. This is a Dallas timeout. That's all of theirs. Yeah, the there's a little chance to think about it. Yeah, that's just those things that they do to you old kickers to freeze you. I don't remember ever freezing. <laughs> Maybe from the weather. Total yards, Dallas 279, the Eagles 293. Rushing yards, the Cowboys 196. Philadelphia 124, most of it by McNabb. And, and a lot of it too in the second half. I mean, the. The Eagles in the in the first half kind of sleepwalked through the first half yep. and the, and they were dull and the crowd was dull and the Cowboys didn't get far enough ahead left them in the game and I don't know if Andy Reid gave him a talk at halftime or if someone else came out but this this team came out as a different team in the second half well, this look Eagles at the yards team. difference 208 to 85 the yards and the attitude was different. Yeah. I mean, they they didn't really play that hard the first half. They did play hard in the second half. Akers. It's good. We're headed for overtime. This one smells like overtime. 34 yards out. Akers ties it 13 13. 
This is a good hole right here. Uh, it's a it's a good job of, of catching the ball. It was in too close to him and bringing it back out and getting it down so that Akers could kick that one perfectly. That was Detmer. Spun the strings away from the kicker. Yeah, because the snap was a little yeah. inside. I mean, yeah. he had to catch it inside and then get it out there and get it down. 13, 13, 11 seconds to go. Both teams out of timeouts. Yep, and, the, and they know that they're going to go to overtime here. I mean, the the Cowboys would like to get some kind of return. The, the Eagles aren't going to kick them a returnable ball. And obviously, they won't kick an onside kick, but you also don't kick it deep. You try and kick it line drive and make one of those guys in the wedge handle it. One of those big guys in the wedge is who you'd like to get that are down about the 20-yard line. See if the ball will stay on the tee without a holder. Akers has it down like he'd like it. I mean, this is where you'd like to kick it. You know, kick it to one of these guys. That's where that's where you want to go. He kicks it away. Tucker is chased deep into the end zone. Well, that's where not, he'll down it. I was gonna say that's not bad either no. for it away that far. I mean, he put the lumber to that yes, one. Yes, he didn't did. It? Randall Cunningham has 11 seconds to work with. I would, I would expect with this field position around the 20-yard line that that they would just run it out and go into overtime. There's, you don't have an 80-yard play in 11 seconds unless you just throw that hail mary. But it's too far away to throw that. Even for, for Randall. Yeah, even, even for anyone. So I, even for the jugs machine. So I think it, you would just just run it out and then go go play overtime. And in fact, they're getting in the That's formation. That's what they had in mind. They're getting in the kneel down formation. First and ten at the 20. 11 seconds left, and they'll just run it out, and we'll go to overtime. 13-13 tie. Dave Campo obviously disappointed, but still has work to do. The first overtime game in 83 meetings between these two. This is something they'll have a, a coin flip now, and, and they always say that you know it's not fair the team that loses a coin flip if the other team scores doesn't get the ball. But that's that's football. I yeah. think that is fair, and I think if you look at the statistics, it's about 50. -50. It's about 50-50. Right here, well, team winning coin toss has won 80 percent, 86 percent of the game. That's not 50 50. Yeah, but that's this year. That's that's just talking about this year, right? The home team is four and three. Well, let's listen to what goes on. Darren Woodson out, Mike Carey, the referee. To break the tie, there'll be one sun death overtime period. Both teams will have two timeouts, and fourth quarter rules will prevail. This is heads, this is tails. What's your call? Heads and calls. Tails. Which goal? The Eagles win the toss. Philadelphia has won the toss. They'll receive. Eighty six percent of the games have been won by the team winning the coin toss this year. Fifty four percent of the game. The home team. One forty six to one thirty three. Fifteen have ended in ties. Yeah, of course they still can end in a tie because yeah. it's only one quarter. Only one they only quarter. play fifteen more minutes. Each team will get two timeouts. Dave Brown and Brian Mitchell back deep. Mike and Orr to kick it off. Lines it left. Mitchell takes it. And Brian Mitchell gets it back to the 35. This was a few years ago. 
over the years this this series has really produced some 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 great finishes. <laughs> you just yep. you just look at them and you remember them and you look at the you know the players are different, the the coaches are different, but you know the teams and the results and the, and the way they end uh, it just seems to be about the same, doesn't it? You know, I wondered in the beginning as the Eagles started their own 34. Look at this shift. A mass shift. <laughs> shift. Here's McNabb. Gets the ball to his tight end, Chad Lewis. Always before the word around the league was that the Cowboys, when they dressed in blue, were easier to, de to defeat. This time the Eagles reversed things on them. I remember that with Tom Landry. Yeah, that, yeah. You know, that was a way that you would you would play them. You'd, you'd, you'd make them wear their blue and they couldn't play as well that they they felt better and played better in their white uniform. That was the first reception by a tight end. Chad Lewis, who's been a favorite target. Here's McNabb. Up the middle, open. Yep. And that's the thing. again. That's the thing I think they could have done all day. You know, we, you know, we talked early that that's what Jacksonville did to him a week ago, that that middle with a tight end going in there was open all day. And the Eagles never went to it. They just kept throwing to their backs. And now they finally figure that this isn't a bad way to go. And you'll see Lewis, he just comes right there in the middle. And comes clear. Yeah, and he just turns around and gives him the eight and the nine, and McNabb hits him right between them. Woodson comes up to make the stop. As Lewis in motion again. McNabb. To Cecil Martin. Martin fighting for yardage and comes close to first down yardage. And he's still fighting, and I think he got the first down. I think he did. He's trying to get everyone fired up, isn't he? All is quiet on the Cowboy bench. Well, that's their offense. They're just hoping that their defense can get them the ball back for them because you know you want a shot. I mean, you want a shot at it. And what it is is when you lose the toss, then your defense has to do the job. And if your defense doesn't do the job, you're going to lose the game. Johnson in motion, fake pitch back. The toss is picked off by Baron Wortham, who's supposed to be good against the run. McNabb's toss intended for Lewis. Yep, they brought Lewis underneath. It was a trick play. What they tried to do is they bring Lewis underneath. You'll see him come across. You see McNabb fakes the bootleg, and then he comes out and he and he tries to he tries to hit Lewis, and it goes right through his hands, right into Wortham's. You see Lewis is coming across. He started on the left hand side. He goes, he comes across the offense, and the ball just goes right through his hands. And so the Cowboys take over for the first time in overtime. And the Cowboys offense does get their chance. That's the Cowboys offense, the Eagles defense. McGarity in motion. Emmett Smith gets the ball. And Emmett looking for a place to go. Gets about three. I said earlier that so it's only one quarter. They get two timeouts, and the first team that scores wins the game. 13-13. The Eagles tied it up. For the next to last play of regulation. Second and eight. Bobby Taylor goes with McGarity, and now he comes on a blitz. Cunningham under throw. I'll tell you, is down. They've had that defensive lineman wait at that corner all day for Cunningham. Anytime he starts out there, they have someone that's going to meet him there. They are. That's what you call containment. I'm sure that this Eagle defense says there's no way that we can let Randall Cunningham get outside our containment. And they've kept him inside and really given him some hits. Yes, they when have. When he's rolled out to that right side today. A couple of times he's been popped. Third and eight. Cunningham up under center, no shotgun. Looks and throws to McGarity. McGarity beats one tackler and came close. I'm not sure if he didn't get a first down. I think he did. And if he did, that was a good play by McGarity. Yep. And again, poor tackling by this Eagle defense. His Eagle defense. We're going to see the blitz here. Randall Cunningham and McGarity both read it. 
Harris comes off in the blitz. Now Dawkins has to make that tackle. He has to make that yep. play. If he doesn't make that play, it's a first down. He didn't make that play, and it is a first down. McGarity, a heck of an effort. You see what happened though is Al Harris, who was on McGarity, came on a corner blitz, and that left Dawkins on the receiver. Tucker in motion, Emmett Smith the ball carrier. Emmett. Picks up about six. Donovan McNabb, what a future he has. Yeah, he's going to be he's going to be around here for a long time. And you know, I, mean, I know I was saying earlier this morning on the morning show that that he's only in his second year. You know, and I used to always think that it took five years before a quarterback could play in this league. And now they're playing in their first year, and they're going to have their ups and downs. This is only his 16th start today. Thomas, he fumbles, fumble. The Eagles are saying they got it. And it looks like they did. Yep, Tim Howe got it. You wonder why in the heck they came up with that play. Robert Thomas, the old linebacker, the blocker, why would you hand it to him? I mean, you have Emmett Smith, if you don't want it, if you, if you don't want him, then you, you put Chris Warren in there. The well, handoff why, is up on the numbers. Yeah, but I mean, why give it to an old linebacker in overtime in this type of situation? What's he going to do? Get back to the line of scrimmage? That's about it. I don't mean to second guess. I guess I did, but whew, that was a shock by me. I mean, you you know you you take those guys and you, know, you fall back and you you know, you throw them a few passes and let them block all day, but you never never give them a bone in overtime. The handoff is up about the numbers, but. Still, you wonder about the call. Well, how many times do you think Randall Cunningham has practiced to uh, hand off to Robert Thomas? Not many. This is Autry. Oh, there's a flag on the play. And I see the Eagles clapping. It must be against Dallas. This is where everyone has to calm down. Lonzo Spellman. Dead ball fouls by both teams. Both personal fouls by number 76 of the offense, number 90 of the defense. They are set. Second half. Alonzo Spellman and John Welburn. Well, here's Spellman right here. And you'll see him. You see the plays over. There's the first one right there, and there's the second one. The hit by Wellborn was a penalty. The retaliation. Right here by Spellman was a penalty. Oh man, you see Wellborn's yep. head snap back? Yes, I did. I think the retaliation was a harder elbow than the than the first striking. It's second and five as the penalty's offset. But if Spellman didn't do that, they would have had the penalty. Here's McNabb outside to Cecil Martin who got perhaps two and our umpire went down I don't know what happened to him. you see that the play goes yep. away and the umpire who has the umpire cam that would be an interesting shot I mean he's in there and he's going to fall down there's what happened to him Tarn Small yep. Yep. now you'll see what it looks like when you, when you get hit <laughs> I've been hit when stuff looked like that. Yeah, I have too. Third and one. McNabb back to throw. Looking for someone, find someone. Chad Lewis makes the catch and gets an eagle first down. Down around his shoe tops as Akers gets ready. I think that's the thing that the Eagles want to think here is just keep thinking because there's plenty of time. Time is not important here. Is just keep getting first down. Jerry Jones, the owner of the Cowboys, has left his perch up in the stands and is down on the sideline now. Because they have this game in hand to let it get out of hand. Here's McNabb. And the screen pass again to Autry. And Autry down to about the 15, 14. Big play there by Darnell Autry. Yeah, you think at some point the the Cowboys would know how to how to defend that screen right? I think that you know the the biggest plays that the Eagles have had offensively have been the screen, and then they've been the screen to the right, and it's the same type of thing. 
The linemen come up the field. They get their offensive line out there. They get a couple blocks there. And they just run right up the field. I mean that's something when you when you play a game and you might win the game and your biggest play is screen right. First and ten Philadelphia at the Dallas 15. A handoff again to Autry. No game. Still go back to that Robert Thomas yeah. handoff and you wonder where in the heck that came from in overtime. 13 13 we're in overtime. Clock running with just over eight minutes left. When would you send in Acres? I would. I would keep playing. I wouldn't. I wouldn't send him in until third down. I wouldn't. I don't. I don't believe in that second down one. Uh, I kind of believe in the third down one a little, and I've done that before in case something goes wrong. Here's Autry. Taken down by Leon Lynn. Yeah, I would say that they'll send Acres in now. Here he comes. Or not yet, I beg your pardon. Well, he's coming out last. Yeah, he was yeah. over there warming up. They sent the rest of the guys the out. Holders out. He was he was out there warming up. Detmer's out. And now Akers joins the group. You know, and he was off by himself, you know, just kicking in there. And I remember I learned that from George Bland that, you know, don't talk to me before you want me to kick one. Just send me out. And that's what they did with Akers. 32 yards away is Akers. And the Eagles win it 16 13. Akers is true. Disappointment, severe disappointment for Dave Campo and the Cowboys. They had the game in hand, as you said. 16 13, the Eagles. Win their sixth game. The first sweep for the Cowboys since 1990. This one in overtime. <laughs>